the following is a special presentation of the Westmoreland Sports Network. Play ball! Coverage of the 2019 Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League Playoffs on the Westmoreland Sports Network is sponsored by Aroma Italiano on Ligonier Street in Latrobe. Experience the Aroma Italiano difference from Italy to your dinner plate. By Excella Health in Westmoreland County. Excella Health wants to know how can we help you today. By the Air Force Reserve. Our mission is to fly, fight, and win. By Elite Plumbing Kitchens and Baths in the Latrobe Route 30 Plaza. Let Elite help you design the kitchen or bathroom of your dreams. By the Westmoreland County Chamber of Commerce. Building business, connecting communities, empowering everyone. And by Seton Hill University. This way up. Now, the Westmoreland Sports Network takes you live for today's pregame show. and welcome to continuing coverage of the Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League Baseball Championship here on the Westmoreland Sports Network. As tonight from Rosa O'Gletty Park on the border of Latrobe and Dairy, we bring to you game two in a best of three series between the number one seed Dairy Ukes and number two Rays. I'm Sean Myers alongside Roger Downs here on the call. Roger, 24 hours ago, game number one went to the top seed, Derry Ukes, courtesy of a 9-3 victory. The turning point, a six-run outburst in the fifth inning that proved to be the difference. And also, you look at the performance out of the bullpen, Zach David, as he came on in inning number two, he really shut down this Rays offense. Now the Rays have to win this game to keep the series alive. Yeah, Rays have been pushed to the brink. They're going to rely on the right hand, right arm of Brandon Fetter on the mound to keep them in this championship series. And the Dairy Ukes, led by manager Mike Self and his coaching staff, would like nothing more than to extend this championship series one more game. Now you see the records for these squads. The Ukes 21-6-1 and one after last night's victory. 18-9 and nine for the number two seed Rays. Dairy Ukes played in this championship series a year ago, coming up short to Heat Siphon. Because game one had Derry Ukes as the home team, they switched dugouts, and as a result, Rays plays as the home squad tonight. That means the Ukes bat first. Let's take a look at the lineup under the guidance of manager Mike Self. Leading off, number three, Ryan Harbert, the shortstop. He's followed by catcher Landon Carnes, wearing number two. Then it's Zach David, the hero of last night's game, playing in left field, wearing number 22. Brady Marichko on the mound, bats cleanup, wearing 21. Then it's Quinn Hill, number nine, at first base. Cole Zezzo in center, wearing 19. Number 55, Fletcher Harvey, plays in right field. Leo Bezela plays at second base, wearing number one. Caden Kim, the designated hitter, enters the lineup, wearing 27. And then lastly, Peyton Gamir, the extra hitter, wears number four. So the 10 in the batting order, Harbert, Carnes, David, Marichko, Hill, Zezzo, Harvey, Bezela, Kim, and Gamir. Defensively for the Rays, as mentioned, Brandon Fetter will be on the mound. Colin Bush behind the plate. The first baseman is Matt Sterrett. Braden Riott at second. Jake Watson is at third. Lucas Ray is the shortstop. Ethan Fry is in left. Eric Batista is the center fielder. And the right fielder is Brad Hissom. The Rays under the guidance of Rick Watson as Brandon Fetter goes through his warm-up pitch, is just about set to get this one underway. Roger, the umpire and crew for tonight's matchup. For today, behind the plate, the umpire chief, Dean Watt, Tony DeMary is at first, Mark Oler is at second, and Jeff Joe Regula is at third base. Ryan Harbert steps into the batter's box. Fetter winds, and we are underway. 
pitch misses inside to Harbor. Ryan Harbor with tremendous speed. Anytime he gets on the base pass, he can create havoc. He had three stolen bases last night. Ryan Harbor, Ligonier Valley wrestler as well. well. With the last name Harbor, you figure he's got to be associated in wrestling as it's a 2-0 count in favor of the Ukes leadoff batter. Tonight, the Ukes are in the third base dugout. Rays on the first base side. 2-0 pitch, misses low. The count now goes to 3-0. Well, if you're a fan of the Dairy Ukes, this is exactly what you want. A 3-0 count to Ryan Harbert. Trying to get him on the base pass to start the game and utilize his speed. Better delivers. Called strike outside corner. Makes the count 3-1. and one. Mentioned Harbert had those three steals last night in the victory. He reached base all four times, twice by air, and a pair of singles mixed in. As he pulls this one foul. Third base side. The count goes full. Well, Roger with the semifinals wrapping up on Tuesday, a day off, and then, of course, game one last night. It's somewhat taxing on the pitching staffs of these squads, and with pitch counts preventing some of the arms from being available, we'll certainly see the depth of these squads. This one is smacked out to center field, but Batista, the center fielder underneath it, takes a few steps in and records the first out off the bat of Harvard. Yeah, you are quite correct, Sean. The pitching depth will be tested, and both of these squads are a little bit short due to players not here once again this evening. There's a good look at Batista. What a talented player he is out in center field as Landon Carnes digs in. The catcher for the Ukes takes a first pitch ball. Landon Carnes, Greater Latrobe, we'll try to keep everyone informed of where all these young men catcher attend two, their respective high schools. Carnes sends this one out to right center field in the gap, but ranging over and making the catch is Brad Hissom. Looked like Hissom was shaded towards center field to begin with. As a result, the second fly ball out early in this contest. Yeah, very nice on the scouting report. Hissom shaded a couple steps over to the center field area. Ball came right into him. Hissom now the Justin right field toward the line with Zach David at the plate. First pitch, a called strike to David. We mentioned what he did on the mound last night, but he was impressive at the plate. As always, had a pair of hits, including a two-run double and the turning point in the fifth inning. Yeah, he's a very good all-around player, Dan. He's also a very good athlete. Zach David attends Greensburg Central Catholic and is a football player as well. 1-1 one, one pitch. Pulled foul down the first base side. Here's a look at Brandon Fetter, the right-handed pitcher for Rays. Last night, Rays sent Braden Riot to the mound to begin the contest, and then Matt Sterrett finished it out in relief. One-two pitch, and that hits David. He tried to get out of the way, but was unable to avoid that curveball. He's aboard, first base runner for the Ukes, comes with two outs. Uh, tough luck for Brandon Fetter. Now batting the pitcher, number 21, Braden Marisco. We got the trophy set up behind us. Certainly that's what it's all about here tonight and potentially tomorrow. Game three would be held tomorrow morning as Marichko first pitch swinging off the glove of the second baseman, Riot squirts into center field and then Hissom picks it up, gets it in, runners at the corners. Looked like it was going to be the third out, but Riot couldn't snatch it. As a result, Ukes are in business. I think one of the most surprised people here at Rose Ogletty Park was Braden Riot. I believe he thought he had that one measured all the way. See if we can catch it on the replay. Inside out swing there by Marichko. The first baseman, number nine, Quinn Hill. Well, now Quinn Hill gets an opportunity to bat with two runners on, two out here in the top of inning number one. Runner from first goes, pitch misses high, and nowhere for Bush to throw. As a result, Marich goes into second. There's now two in scoring position for the Ukes. Quinn Hill, Greater Latrobe. His favorite subject is history. And he smacks this one, but a catch on the run made by Luke Ray as the side is retired. No runs in the frame, no hits, one air and two left on base. We've played a half an inning. It's Darius nothing, 
and Ray's coming to bat. Take another look at the hard hit ball off of the bat of Hill and the nice catch by Ray. As Ray's coming up, we continue our coverage of the Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League playoffs here on the Westmoreland Sports Network. The Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League was founded in 1968 and features players from 13 to 15 years old. The league has no geographic boundaries, which allows players from many different areas and school districts to participate. For complete standings, team rosters, photos, news, and league sponsors, visit the Latrobe Dairy Teener League online at www.ldatl.com. That's ldatl.com. You can also follow Teener League updates on Facebook. Good luck to the teams, players, coaches, and everyone that makes the Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League one of the top leagues in the state. Need to see a physician on the weekend? Excella Health Primary Care Weekends offer convenient medical care when your doctor isn't available. For minor illnesses and injury, Excella Health Primary Care Weekends open 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Saturday and Sunday in Latrobe Hospital, Excella Square at Norwin, and newest location in Greensburg behind Westmoreland Hospital. Walk in or make an appointment. To learn more, visit excellahealth.org, search weekend. You're listening to Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League Baseball on the Westmoreland Sports Network. We head to the bottom of inning number one. Rays coming to bat after the Ukes stranded a pair of runners in the top half of this frame. Let's look at the batting order for Rick Watson's squad for Rays. Leading off, number two, Eric Batista playing in center field. He's followed by Jake Watson, number five, the third baseman. Then it's Luke Ray, the shortstop wearing number 12. Braden Riott bats cleanup at second base, number 22. Then it's the pitcher, Brandon Fetter, number three, followed by Matt Stare at the first baseman who wears number seven. Number 21, Brad Hissom follows, playing in right field. Colin Bush, the catcher, number 11. Ethan Fry, number 10, playing in left field. And Alex Zizmarski, the extra hitter, wearing number one, rounds out the batting order. So it's Batista, Watson, Ray, Riot, Fetter, Sterrett, Hissom, Bush, Fry, and Sizmarski. The battery for tonight's game, Braden Marichko on the mound, and behind the plate, Landon Carnes. First pitch from Marichko, that one well high. It's 1-0 to Batista. Quinn Hill is the first baseman. Leo Bezela at second. Third base is Jake Lloyd. The shortstop is Ryan Harbert. Zach David in left. Cole Zezzo in center. And Fletcher Harvey is the right fielder. This one hit in the air out to left field. David underneath it and makes the catch to retire Batista. That's a big first out. Batista is a hard one to keep off the base pass. Certainly is, and when you can keep him off the base pass, you have a very, very good chance of keeping the run total down for this Rays team. Very talented, very speedy young man. Zach David, one of the players we talked to post game last night for the Ukes. If you want to go back, you can check out that archive. He and Leo Bezela join me with some interviews. Jake Watson takes a first pitch ball. Jake Watson, Derry area. That pitch misses inside from Richko. It's 2 0. Manager of the Rays is Rick Watson. Swing and a miss. The count now 2 and 1 to Watson. Jake Watson. 0 of 2 last night did walk and score a run as he sends this one out of play on the first base side. The count goes even at 2 and 2. Another nice evening here in Westmoreland County, Sean. And we'd like to thank everyone for tuning in to tonight's Teener League final game number two. It's a nice night here, but not too far from here. Some storms came through the area. Breaking ball bounced towards third. It's going to be a difficult play for Lloyd to throw across in time. From the third base bag to the first base bag, Lloyd to Hill for the second out. Yeah, Jake Lloyd, very, very nice play. No panic for that young man. Fielded the ball cleanly. As you said, Sean, at the third base bag, good strong throw to first. Now batting the shortstop, number 12, Luke Gray. When I saw him catch it right at the bag, Roger, I didn't think he was going to be able to get that ball there in time. But a good job of Lloyd to retire Watson. You see how close it was as the first pitch from Rich go to Ray, a called strike. Luke Ray, also from Derry area. 
Weak swing there by Ray. He was fooled on the curveball. He's now on an 0-2 hole. As he kicks some turd around in the batter's box. Ray was 0-3 last night. Did reach, but it came courtesy of an error. It'll be important for Marichko to keep the first five of this Rays team off the bases. 0-2 pitch. Slow roller towards Harvard. He misses it. Through the legs for an E6. As a result, Rays aboard. That one sounded like it was off the end of the bat. Not yeah, much mustard behind it. Let's watch the replay here. Indeed, it was off the top of the bat. Second baseman number 22, Braden Riott. No, oh, Harbert knew it right away. And now Riott gets a chance to bat. First pitch, a strike as Carnes popped up, thought about throwing it first, but Ray was able to get back with relative ease. Riott stings this one to center field, says a going back, but he has the play and the side is retired. So the two out. Air does not prove costly. No runs, no hits, one left on base. We've played an inning scoreless between number one Darius and number two Rays in game number two of the championship series here on the Westmoreland Sports Network. Every day, men and women from communities across this nation serve as reserve citizen airmen. I am proud to defend our nation. Proud to be part of a team that helps make a difference. I am proud to be part of something larger than me and to serve my country. We celebrate those who have served and those who are proudly serving in the Air Force Reserve. Our mission is to fly, fight, and win in air, space, and cyberspace. And I am proud to be a member. I am of proud to protect our Proud to serve in the U.S. Air Force Reserve. Want to know where the top area student athletes are heading to play after high school? All the information you need is on our Westmoreland County College Commitment page. The page features a list of current Westmoreland County high school athletes that have committed to play a sport at the next level. From football to basketball to swimming, from Division I to Division III, our College Commitment page has you covered. Check it out now on westmorelandsports.com. Westmoreland County's broadcast home for high school sports, the Westmoreland Sports Network. We move to inning number two. Nothing on the board between the Derry Ukes and Rays. I'm Sean Myers alongside Roger Downs here on the Westmoreland Sports Network. Six, seven, and eight in the batting order for the Ukes with Cole Zezzo set to lead off against Brandon Fetter. I want to let you know that you can purchase your very own copy of tonight's Senior League Championship broadcast right at your fingertips. Simply locate the black buy download button on the right side of the game tracker screen. Click it, fill out the information, and then a special link will be sent directly to your email, which you can then download and keep your copy forever. Burn it to DVD, make highlights, whatever you like to do with it. Make memories that last for a lifetime with your very own copy of tonight's broadcast from the Westmoreland Sports Network. There's Cole Zezzo, left-handed batter for the Ukes against Fetter. Fetter misses well high on that breaking ball. Fetter did not allow a hit in the first inning, but there was two base runners against him, a hit batter as well as an E4. A pitch well in front of the plate, maybe Hober compensating from their prior ball. It's now 2-0. Cole Zezzo from Greater Latrobe. Strictly a baseball player. The 2-0. Called strike. The count now 2-1 to Zezzo. Fletcher Harvey, Leo Bezela slated to follow here in the top of the second. The pitch misses away. Zezzo has a hitter's count of 3-1. Yeah, good take there by Cole Zezzo. Hit in the air Tough to play. Sh shallow left center field, but it's Ray, the shortstop, who goes back into the grass to make the catch. It's all about communication on a play like that, isn't it, Roger? Absolutely, and we are 
not close enough to hear if anyone did call for the ball. Lucas Ray did appear to take charge as Eric Batista, who was quite active as a defender, kind of veered off out of his way to permit him to make the catch. First pitch misses inside to Fletcher Harvey. Harvey was productive last night. Singled, walked, reached on an air and scored. Also struck out. Chases that one, misses badly. The count now one and one to Harvey. Fletcher Harvey from Greater Latrobe also plays hockey. Yeah, I mentioned in a previous broadcast, you see number 55, you think of some all-time great hockey defensemen. This one lofted to shallow left field. Fry coming in, and he makes the catch. And again, you see the range of Batista, as he was pretty much right behind Fry for the second out. Yeah, nice job, Ethan Fry. Would you instruct Batista not to maybe run directly behind the left and right fielder when it's pretty much hit straight to that position? I would do that, and I would also tell my left and right fielder to really, really yell loud, mine, 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 or I got it, I got it, allowing Batista to know that, yeah, you can make the catch. First pitch swinging Bezela right to the shortstop Ray. Takes a high bounce, but he's able to handle it. Throw across and retire Bezela. One, two, three, frame. No runs, no hits, no one left. We've played an inning and a half scoreless between Dariukes and Rays as we continue our coverage of the 2019 championship. It's game number two of the Latrobe Dairy Area Tiener League here on the Westmoreland Sports Network. Hi Westmoreland County fans, this is Chad Ammon, President of the Westmoreland County Chamber of Commerce. At the Chamber, we open doors for businesses every day, providing our members with the tools, programs, and opportunities they need to grow. By helping our county businesses reach their goals, our community's overall quality of life is enhanced. Call 724-834-2900 or visit westmorelandchamber.com for your company to become a member of the Chamber of Commerce. The Westmoreland County Chamber of Commerce, building business, connecting communities, and empowering people. Welcome inside Aroma Italiano. Aroma Italiano on Ligonier Street in Latrobe serves delicious, authentic Italian cuisine at affordable prices. Aroma Italiano makes their own one-of-a-kind sauce and bread daily to go along with their homemade spaghetti, gnocchi, ravioli, pizza, and signature sandwiches. For a menu and daily specials or to reserve a banquet room, visit LatrobeItaliano.com or call 724-520-1291. Experience the Aroma Italiano difference from Italy to your dinner plate. You're listening to Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League Baseball on the Westmoreland Sports Network. Bottom of inning number two, scoreless between Ukes and Rays. Game number two as the first pitch swinging by Brandon Fetter goes out of play. Ukes trying to close this series out tonight. They scored the victory last night 9-3 using a six-run fifth inning as the decisive measure. Yeah, they got great production from the bottom of the lineup last evening, did the Ukes. If the Rays win, it goes to a third game tomorrow. Swing and a miss. And Roger, that third game would take place very early yes. in the morning. It would be a unique 9.30 first pitch. The one, two. Swing and a miss, it gets away from Carnes. He's gonna have to throw down to first base. That throw is in time, however, as the strikeout goes two, three. Yeah, and some of our listeners and viewers may be asking, 9.30, why 9.30? Well, it seems that members of both teams have vacations scheduled and would much sooner play at the early hour than not play at all. Good job there of Carnes completing the strikeout as Sterrett fouls off the first pitch he sees from Marichko. Matt Sterrett is a golfer and a basketball player at Greater Latrobe. Marichko working quickly. He's ready to deliver already. Swing and a foul tip. It's 0-2. Got an email, Sean, from Dan and Anna Sterrett. Matt, we couldn't be more proud of you. It's been great to watch you and the Rays team perform 
so well this season. Hoping for that win tonight. Go Rays. Love, Mom and Dad. As he sends this one to third and off of the glove of Lloyd. He may be sparked by that message. Starrett is aboard. We'll see if they call it a hit or an error, but nonetheless, Starrett, the second base runner this game for Rays. I believe they've given it a hit. Now batting the right fielder, number 21, Brad Hissom. Swing and a miss by Hissom. Now we should note, it is not the legendary Ray LeVay doing the scorekeeping tonight. No, Le Ray is unavailable this evening. Brad Hissom steps in. That one misses away and now it allows Starrett to get the second. So a wild pitch against Marichko and Starrett now in scoring position. When Brad Hissom's not playing baseball, he can be found riding around on his quad. One on, one out. Bounce towards third. Lloyd mishandles it again. And now the runner breaks for third. Diving effort. He is in there. Starrett out racing Harvard. Runners at the corners. And that certainly would be an E5 on that play. Yes. A good heads up running by Starrett. Harvard did everything he could. Yeah, let's watch Starrett on the replay. He sees Lloyd turn his back to him, and he breaks for the third base bag. Now batting the catcher, number 11, Colin Bush. And a good call. Great videography by TJ Belega as well. Cutting his teeth behind the camera. Not literally. Colin Bush batting. First pitch misses, and the runner at first, Hissom, stays put. Let's see if he goes on pitch number two. Ray's trying to strike first in this contest in the bottom of inning number two. Runner does go from first. It misses away off the glove of Carnes and really inconsequential as Hisson was going to get the second regardless. Now two in scoring position. The count 2-0 and oh to Colin Bush. Right off from, from that shot, Sean, you can see the second baseman, Bezela, was a little bit deep. Colin Bush needs to drive one to that second base part of the bag, and he did not, but hit hard nonetheless. He was trying to go opposite field there, but just missed the chalk down the third baseline. Zach David over to retrieve it. Which is a good piece of hitting as well. Right now, what you want to do if you're Colin Bush, you must and you must want to put the ball in play, giving your team an RBI opportunity, particularly with the infielders playing at their normal depth. The 2-1, make it 3-1. and one. Ethan Fry on deck, the number nine hitter in the 10 batter lineup for Rays. Richko quickly delivers, misses high, bases are loaded. That's the first walk issued by Marichko. 26 pitches now for Braden Marichko. Been called time is gonna be called. Ukes want to talk this over. Well, after Fetter struck out to begin the frame, Starrett reached on a single to third, play that Lloyd couldn't make, and then Lloyd committed an error on the ball hit by Hissom. Starrett moved to third, and then Colin Bush drawing a walk to load the bases. One out, bottom of inning number two, and Fry set the bat against Marichko. Ethan Fry, I hate to sound like a broken record, but Rays must put the ball in play. Well, Fry last night in his three at bats put the ball in play only once. He had a pair of strikeouts and an 0 of 3 performance. Now let's take a look at the defensive alignment of the youth. Let's see what they're going to go with. Well, the third baseman, Lloyd, and the first baseman, Hill, playing in on the edge of the grass. Middle infielders at more traditional depth. First pitch misses inside to Fry. Well, right now, even though the bases are loaded, if you're a fan of the Rays, you're only one pitch away from a potential double play to end this inning. 1-0. Bounced to the second baseman, Bezela. He bobbles it, throws to first. The play is made there, but the run comes across. Landon Carnes, the catcher, not happy. It's 1-0 in favor of Rays. So what should have happened there defensively, Roger? Well, 
almost called it, Sean. Bezalo's got to take a step up, filled that ball, and there's the potential for the double play, and of course, you can never assume that. First pitch, a strike to Sismarski. He's batting with two outs and a pair of runners in scoring position. It's one and one as Rich goes latest offering, misses away. Well, Ethan Fry did his job. In the dirt. And now Karn's able to track it down. Hissom at third, Bush at second. One run already across here in the bottom of inning number two. And Sismarski, the number 10 hitter at the plate. Two and one count in his favor. Richko misses low, it's three and one, and I would think Sismarski will be looking at this next offering. Sismarski from Greater Latrobe, Batista on deck. Do not want to face him potentially with the bases loaded. But that's exactly what will happen as Sismarski draws the walk. Marichko now does have to face Batista with the bases jammed. And not only are the bases full Batty, once again, with any type of air or bobble, extra pitches coming off the arm of the pitcher, Marichko. Eric Batista steps in. Called strike, Batista knew it the whole way. He flew out to left field back in inning number one. It's now the bottom of the second, his team up one nothing. The 0-1. Check swing, taken for a ball. Good discipline there by Batista. Seven inning game here tonight. Last night the game was deadlocked until the bottom of the fifth when the Ukes scored six times to turn a 3-3 game into a 9-3 final. 1-1 misses low, Marichko can't find the mark. We saw last night, Roger, that the starting pitcher for the Ukes, Ryan Harbert, had a hard time throwing strikes. He was replaced in the second by Zach David, who closed it out. Richko needs a big pitch here. 2 1 down the middle. The count goes to 2 and 2. Batista taking that pitch, still has one big swing left. Hissom, Bush, Zismarski all on base. Two outs, a 2-2. Two -two. Curveball in the dirt, gets past the catcher, but again, Hissom doesn't want to potentially make that third out trying to come home. The count is now full. Count is full, bases loaded, runners will be off on the windup. Which means any hit could potentially clear the bases. Certainly you figure anything to the outfield will bring in two with runners going on the pitch. Golden opportunity for the Rays to add to their lead at this point. Could be a big turning point already. Bottom of inning number two, the payoff pitch with the bases loaded. Richko delivers. Tall strike three, down goes Batista looking. The bases left loaded, but one run does come across in the frame, courtesy of one hit and one error. We've played two innings. It's one nothing in favor of Rays, take a look at the call to strike three, Marichko gets out of a jam, limiting the damage. We head to the third as we continue here on the Westmoreland Sports Network. When you begin planning enhancements to your kitchen or bathroom, let the local experts at Elite Plumbing Kitchens and Baths in Latrobe help you get started. Elite Plumbing Kitchens and Baths carries a full line of thoughtfully designed Moen faucets and shower heads, toilets by Toto and Mansfield, sinks, kitchen cabinets, even showers and bathtubs. Browse their vast showroom in the Route 30 Plaza where you can talk to an incredible designer that will help you finally build the kitchen or bathroom of your dreams. Elite Plumbing Kitchens and Baths in the Latrobe Route 30 Plaza. You're tuned in to the Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League Playoffs on the Westmoreland Sports Network. Join WSN throughout the Teener League postseason as we bring you all the exciting play-by-play -play action of every playoff game. The tying run crosses the plate. Here comes the second runner. He's being waved around. He scores. Each game broadcast features pre- and post-game shows featuring coaches and player interviews. All right, we will now welcome in Mason Septis. Just level head, hit the ball, stay calm, 
history like any other game. Every game broadcast is archived on westmorelandsports.com, where you can go back to watch and listen as often as you'd like. We're the Westmoreland Sports Network, and we're proud to be the broadcast home of the Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League Playoffs. Westmoreland County's broadcast home for high school sports, the Westmoreland Sports Network. Rays in the lead, scoring a single run in the bottom of inning number two, but Roger, it could have been much, much more for Rays. The Ukes got a crucial third out, courtesy of the strikeout with the bases loaded by Marichko. Take another look at it as he sits down, Batista looking at. Certainly is one that we could look back on and say was a major turning point of this contest. Big swing and a miss from number nine hitter Caden Kim to begin inning number three. Yeah, definitely a missed opportunity for the Rays. Caden Kim from Greensburg, Salem comes to the plate. Kim newly inserted to the lineup. That one bounces, it's one and one. Kim, the number nine hitter, Gamir, the number 10 hitter, and then back to the top of the order. Fetter seems to be having more success with his fastball, Sean, than he is with his off-speed pitch. That one over the head of the batter, Kim. Look out. Caden Kim sporting some sunglasses. Well, good thing he was able to see this clearly. Swing and a miss. It's now... Two and two, and after you see a ball go over your head like that, I would think that there's maybe a little bit of uh, hesitancy on the next pitch that you see. Yeah, just a little bit. It was nice job coming back with Fetter with that ball in the dirt. Popped up in the infield towards first. Starrett in foul territory makes the catch. Came retired for the first out. Nice job. We saw and heard Starrett call for the ball, and also went with a. Physical, I got the ball as oh, well. Nice Eddie, job, Matt Starrett. Number four, Peyton Gamir. Now Peyton Gamir steps in. The diminutive left-handed batter. He's the extra hitter tonight. First pitch swinging, but he sends it foul towards the dugout of the Ukes. Gamir got an opportunity to pinch hit last night in inning number six. Good eye there by Gamir, evens the count at one and one. Peyton also plays lax for the Wildcats. Some know that is lacrosse. That pitch well high. That would have been high to any batter, let alone one of Gamir's size. Would have been high to Randy Johnson. <laughs> Two one pitch. It's now three and one to Gamir. Top of the order with Ryan Harbor is on deck. Well, we've already seen the Rays number 10 hitter draw walk. Let's see if Gamir could do the same here for the Ukes. He does, and he knew it right away as Gamir aboard. He sprints down to first base, now back to Harbert and the top of the order. Ryan Harbert fly it out to the center fielder, Batista, to lead off today's game. Now batting number three, Ryan Harbert. That's the first walk for Fetter, and walks, they're going to happen to every pitcher. He certainly don't like to walk the number 10 hitter, however, as that offering misses to Harbert. No, you do not, and right now, Colin Bush has fielded a number of balls in the dirt in the first two plus innings of this game. Let's see if he can keep Gamir at first. Called strike inside corner to Harbert who flew out to center field back in inning number one. I think I recognize that voice, Roger. Oh boy, that sounded like Tom Batcho. Popped up again in the infield. Watson the third baseman underneath it makes the catch for the second out. Right now, young Mr. Fetter, Brandon Fetter, pitching to contact, and his teammates are doing their job defensively. Now batting number two. In steps Carnes. Flew out to center field. Excuse me, to right field. 
He sends this one high in the air to shallow right and on the edge of the infield grass, it's Riot who makes the catch for out number three. Pretty efficient inning there for Fetter despite allowing a one out walk. No runs, no hits, one left on base. We've played two and a half. Rays one, Dariuk's nothing as we play game number two of the championship of the Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League on the Westmoreland Sports Network. What can you expect at Seton Hill University? An opportunity to transform the future. A leader in innovative and mobile technology. A personalized education tells your interests and your goals. A welcoming community. A big step up to your dream career. As a nationally recognized Catholic liberal arts university, Seton Hill pushes your education, your abilities, and your career to a higher level. Seton Hill University. This way up for progress, possibility, and a brighter future. You're listening to Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League Baseball on the Westmoreland Sports Network. We move to the bottom of inning number three. Braden Marichko remains on the hill for the Dairy Ukes. His team facing a 1-0 deficit against the number two seed Rays. We'd Ray like to thank Ray Foot and Ankle Center, board certified foot surgeon, Dr. Mark Ray, for sponsoring part of tonight's game. Dr. Ray has two offices. One in La Trobe at 5944, Route 981, Batter. and one in Ligonier, 621 West Main Street. Thank you, Ray Foot and Ankle Center, for sponsoring tonight's Leading broadcast. For the Rays, five, Headers two, Jake three, and four for Rays. Jake Watson leading off against Marichko. What? First pitch, a swing and a miss for Watson. He grounded out back in inning number one. Well, you mentioned La Trobe and Ligonier. This Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League draws from all over Westmoreland County and even outside the county as the count now 0 2. That is correct, Sean. There are no boundaries, usually anywhere from 24 to 27 games per team. We have 10 teams in the league. Swing and a miss, a three pitch strikeout. Marichko makes quick work of Watson. And all of the games are played right here at Rosa Ogaletti Park in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Now batting number 12, Luke Gray. Another look at strikeout number three for Marichko, showing the velocity there. He blew that one past Watson. And good location on top of it. Luke Ray digs in. A called strike to Ray. Well, Marichko looks like a different pitcher here in the third than he did for most of that second inning. Good curveball there from Braden Marichko. He is pounding the zone, Roger. Five consecutive strikes to begin this stanza. Curveball bounced towards third. Lloyd tested again, he comes charging in. Throw across, not in time, and it's airmailed. And now turning, heading towards second is Ray. I believe that should be an infield single and an E5. I From my vantage point, Ray was gonna beat it out. Yeah, he was, That's you are correct, Sean and then advancing to second on the throwing blunder. Well, once again, Rays have a runner in scoring position. Quinn Hill did everything he could, and they're going to check on Luke Ray right now, or maybe give some instruction. Not sure what. Well, I know he stumbled coming around the first base bag. We picked that up on the replay. He's got a smile on his face. Now in scoring position. Let's take a look. He even stumbled coming out of the box as well. So he ran through, then makes the turn. Oh. Now batting number 22. Yeah, it doesn't look like there was anything hazardous there. 1 0 the count to Riot. And he hammers this one out to left field. David misses it, and that's going to score a run. Ray comes around, getting into second is Riot. He now heads to third. The throw off the mark, and into third base is Braden Riot. It's 2 nothing Rays.
taking advantage of the Ukes defensive blunders. So a single for Riot and an air. And he winds up on third base. You see Ray coming around. This one fisted towards first. Marichko has it, now he has to toss on and does a good job holding the runner at third. So now two outs in the frame, Riot remains at third base. Yeah, just the plain good baseball play all around, Sean. Braden Riot cleanly fielded the ball, took a look at the runner at third, delivered a strike to Quinn Hill at first, keeping that runner, Braden Riot, at third base. Now Starrett steps in. First pitch misses to Starrett. Well, Marichko has really done his job in this inning, but despite his best efforts, the Rays have taken the lead back. They have a one up on the scoreboard, Roger. That's not correct. They're confusing me now. Yeah, I believe the score is 2 0. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. It's now 3 0 to the batter, Matt Starrett. Called strike. Yeah, I do not have Ukes with the run. Yeah, they, Sean. They, that's, that's just a mistake on the scoreboard this one bounced slowly towards hill hill now bobbles it lunges towards the bag and retires the out but a pair of errors prove costly as the run comes across on two hits and one left on base it's two nothing in favor of rays as we move to inning number four we continue our coverage game number two of the latrobe dairy area teen league championship it's here on the westmoreland sports network Packers. Viking. Packers. Viking. Packers. Viking. Red state. Blue state. Vegan. Carnivore. We come from different places. Uptown. Downtown. Night owl. Early bird. We come to different conclusions. Half empty. Half full. But when we live united, we create real, lasting change in the building blocks of life. The education, income, and health of our communities, <laughs> our families, united. even the person next to us. Live united. Real change won't happen without you. <laughs> so give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live united. Sign up at liveunited.org. Every child follows a path in life. For many, that path will lead them to a door, a door that gives them a place to grow, to learn, to belong, a place to forge their future. Because while many doors open, these doors transform. They did for us. Support your local boys and girls clubs. Great futures start here. It is 2-0. We got that squared away as we move to inning number four. Rays trying to extend this series to game number three that would be played tomorrow morning. 9.30, first Ukes, pitch. Number 22, Zach, David. Zach David leading off for the Ukes. Nice curveball from Fetter finds the mark. Hitters three, four, and five for the Derry Ukes who have yet to collect a hit in this contest. That pitch misses in the dirt. Roger, are you in agreement with me on that as well, that there's yet to be a hit for the Derry Ukes? That is correct, according to my scorebook, Sean. All right, there's some discrepancies between the scoreboard out in right center field and what we have, but the big story, it's 2-0 at this point. Now the count 2-1 and one to the batter, Zach David. David would love to atone for that air he committed in left field as he takes a ball. The count now three and one. better has been impressive so far, now beginning his fourth inning of work. But he issues a leadoff walk to David. Second walk allowed by Fetter. 
Well, right now, Sean, I would tend to agree with you. This entire Utes roster would like to atone for the start that they have had tonight, completely opposite of how they began the game last evening. Throw to first, but not in time. Richko reached on an E4 back in inning number one. Last night he had a single score to run, also drew a walk as this one gets to the backstop. Bush unable to get down and keep it in front of him. The wild pitch allows Zach David to get into scoring position. Yeah, we spoke about an inning ago that Brandon Fetter has thrown a number of pitches into the dirt. That misses low. It's 2-0 to Marichko as Fetter struggles to find his own here in the fourth. 42 pitches now for Brandon Fetter. Pitchers can go up to the 100-pitch threshold. 3-0, David falls down. He thought about heading towards third. Now the throw comes to second. He was able to recover in time to get back to the bag. Had he kept his footing, I think he'd be standing at third base right now. I believe you are correct, Sean. I hope the young man is okay. Seems that he went to plant on his right foot and just went down. Seen a few players lose their footing in the early going. Ball four, as you take another look at David. Marich goes aboard, back-to-back -back walks issued by Fetter. Now he has to face the dangerous Quinn Hill. Timeout called. In a meeting of the minds for Rays. Well, right now we've had two consecutive walks off the right arm of Brandon Fetter. Quinn Hill coming to the plate. Pretty good batter in his own right, and he's uh, liable to do some damage. Has a tendency to hit the ball a long way. But right now, it would be a great offensive tool if Quinn Hill laid down a bunt down the third base line. There you see a split screen. Braden Marichko at first, talking to his dad, Bob. And then you saw the meeting of the minds for the Rays Brain Trust and the infield. Roger, I know you're following us on Twitter, Westmoreland SN. Sure. Nobody. So Quinn Hill does step into the batter's box. Two on, nobody out here in the top of the fourth. Uke's trying to pull even, trailing 2 nothing. Called strike to Hill. Well, Owen Mealy checks in. I would like to shout out my dad for helping me get better and making me the player I am today. Okay, Owen, there you have it. Nice job, Mr. Mealy. No one pitch in the dirt, knocked down by Bush, but both runners still advance. The throw comes to third, but David there standing up. There's now two in scoring position for Quinn Hill, and certainly any thought of a bunt, Roger, that you might have had for the Ukes, that's out the window. Yeah, let's take a look at the defensive alignment of the Rays, see how they're gonna play this. The 1-1. One, one. Gets past the catcher again, but this time both runners stay put. 2-1 to Quinn Hill. Each team certainly has had their opportunities here in the early going. Fetter delivers. 3-1. Cole Zezo is the on-deck batter. There's a good look at Zach David who gets his lead from third. At second, it's Marichko. Called strike to Quinn Hill. He doesn't like it, but the count goes full to three and two. A big pitch here from Fetter. Swing and a miss as he gets Hill for a massive first out. That's the best thing that could have happened for the Rays right there, getting the out on Quinn Hill without advancing either runner from second or third. Looks like Hill was just in front of that. Now Zezo, first pitch misses to him. Cole Zezo popped up to shallow left field on a play made by shortstop Luke Gray back in inning number two. Right fielder Swung around toward the right field line. The 1-0. -oh. 
This one hit left side and it gets into the outfield. One run is in. Marichko turns, he will trot home. We have a tie game courtesy of Cole Zezzo's two run single. Nice job, Cole Zezzo. Rhea tried his best to knock it down, knowing that probably no matter what he did, one run was going to score. But because it got out to right center field, both David and Marichko able to score. Yeah, Marichko with pretty good speed, scoring on the single easily. Now first pitch swinging by Harvey in the hole. Ray throws on to second to get the lead runner. Good play there by Ray to Riot for out number two. Yeah, real nice job there. That's a play that this Ray's defense did not execute last evening, and it came back to hurt them in that fifth inning. Tonight, much, much better defensively with the six to four. First offering to Bezela misses high. Leo was one of the heroes last night. A oh, huge double in that fifth inning. Throw to first and crawling his way back is Harvey. Now batting number one, Leo Bazella. Breaking ball in for a strike, evening the count of one and one to Bazela. Hey, Sean, I want to mention an unsung hero for tonight's broadcast. Terry Stevenson of Heat Siphon has been doing a lot of work behind the scenes to make sure this comes off without a hitch this evening, working for both the Lake Hope Dairy Area Teener League and helping the Westmoreland Sports Network out in tremendous fashion. Thank you, Terry, very much. We appreciate his efforts. Two, one. The count two and one. Called strike. It's now even to Bazela, batting with a runner at first, two outs, but two runs across here in the top of the fourth. Ukes have pulled even with Rays. Rays scoring a run in the second and a run in the third. Breaking ball, called strike three. The tag applied. Bazela can't believe it as the side is retired, but two runs come across courtesy of one hit and one left on base. We head to the bottom of the fourth. It's now even at two runs apiece between Rays and Derry Ukes as we continue our coverage here on the Westmoreland Sports Network. If I could spend every day in the woods or on a stream, I'd do it. Taya had two very bad arthritic knees. Without knee replacement, my quality of life would be completely different. I wouldn't be able to do any of those things. I can't say enough about the Excella system. All the staff, the doctors, the nurses, everybody was just incredible. Having a grandson that's a year and a half old, I realized that my knees are more important than just to be used for walking. The Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League was founded in 1968 and features players from 13 to 15 years old. The league has no geographic boundaries, which allows players from many different areas and school districts to participate. For complete standings, team rosters, photos, news, and league sponsors, visit the Latrobe Dairy Teener League online at www.ldatl.com. That's ldatl.com. You can also follow Teener League updates on Facebook. Good luck to the teams, players, coaches, and everyone that makes the Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League one of the top leagues in the state. Westmoreland County's broadcast home for high school sports, the Westmoreland Sports Network. The Ukes plating a pair of runs in the top of this fourth inning. Good turnout for game two of this oh, Rays, best of three championship set. Rays come to bat with 7, 8, 9 in the batting order. Brad Hissom leading off takes a first pitch ball from Braden Marichko, and there's a number of defensive changes made by the Ukes here. Next offering in for a called strike. The count goes to 1 and 1. Yeah, if you're keeping your scorecard at home, Fletcher Harvey will move from right field to left field. Zach David from left to third. Swing and a miss from Hissom. The count 1 and 2. And Nick Stump, number 26 is now the right fielder. So Lloyd exits, previously at third base. This one smashed foul on the right side. It's still one and two to Hissom, who reached on an E5 
and got to third, but ultimately was stranded there in inning number two. There's a look at the new third baseman, Zach David. Left-handed third baseman, we've seen Zach pitch, play the outfield, catch, he can play anywhere. And that breaking ball stays up to Hissom, it's two and two. Hissom, Bush, and Fry, the three slated up here for Rays. Swing and a miss, but it gets past Carnes. He has it, throws to first to complete the strikeout. Good hustle by Landon Carnes. Strikeout number four for Marichko. Take another look at the K. Left-handed batter, Colin Bush. Number 11, Colin Bush. Routine grounder towards Bezela. He has it. Tosses across for out number two. One pitch, one out. That's what you'd like to see to help out your pitch count. Here's a shot of Leo Bezela, the second baseman. A rookie, as he called himself last oh, night to this did. squad. Left fielder number 10, Ethan Fry. Now Ethan Fry. Oh, and he's plonked. That one's going to sting. Fry holding that elbow. Yeah, he is hurt. From where we're situated, slightly behind off, behind home plate offset to the left, you could hear it vividly, Roger, that yeah, one. Yeah, it's <laughs> no doubt. Hopefully he's going to be all right. Hopefully with just some initial shock of the ball striking his, looks like his elbow or his bicep. Well, you, if you can get in the bicep or tricep, you take that. But right on the elbow, that yeah, there's, ball there's on very bone. little protection there. That is correct. Looks like he's going to be okay. He's down there with first base coach Mark Ray. Here's the replay of the hit by pitch. Looked like maybe just above the elbow. Right, I'm sure as we... If you've ever been hit by a pitch, that initial shock is uh, really scare you still working it out a little bit as expected now the number 10 hitter the extra hitter is marski pitch high to him and this a, a shorter player roger and that just naturally creates a smaller strike zone it becomes very difficult for marichko he really has almost no margin of error yeah alex is 13 year old He's got a low crouch with his batting stance as he comes up empty on that big hack. I would expect the Rays bench to also get some ice, Sean, maybe between innings when Ethan Fry is in there, maybe just to ice that just as a precaution. And there's been a lot of talk at higher levels, minor league baseball and major league baseball, about maybe an automatic strike zone, a robotic strike zone. And one of the questions that I've had as this one's popped up, we'll have to get to this later, is calling it as Bezela, and Bezela makes the catch, nearly collided with Harbert, but it goes for the third out of the frame. No runs, no hits, one left on base. We've played four, nothing's been decided yet. It's 2-2 between Derry Ukes and Rays. As we head to the fifth on our continuing coverage of the Latrobe Derry Area Teen League Championship right here on the Westmoreland Sports Network. Every day, men and women from communities across this nation serve as reserve citizen airmen. I am proud to defend our nation. Proud to be part of a team that helps make a difference. I am proud to be part of something larger than me and to serve my country. We celebrate those who have served and those who are proudly serving in the Air Force Reserve. Our mission is to fly, fight, and win in air, space, and cyberspace. And I am proud to be a member. I am of proud to protect our Proud to serve in the U.S. Air Force Reserve. Welcome inside Aroma Italiano. Aroma Italiano on Ligonier Street in Latrobe serves delicious, authentic Italian cuisine at affordable prices. Aroma Italiano makes their own one-of-a-kind sauce and bread daily to go along with their homemade spaghetti, gnocchi, ravioli, pizza, and signature sandwiches. For a menu and daily specials or to reserve a banquet room, visit latrobeitaliano.com or call 724-520-1291. 
one. Experience the Aroma Italiano difference from Italy to your dinner plate. Westmoreland County's broadcast home for high school sports. The Westmoreland Sports Network. Attention fans, you can purchase your very own copy of tonight's Teener League Championship broadcast and it's right at your fingertips. Simply locate the black Buy Download button on the right side of the Game Tracker screen, click it, fill out the information, and a special link will be sent directly to your email, which you can then download and keep your copy forever. Burn it to DVD, make highlights, whatever you'd like to do with it. Make memories that last for a lifetime with your very own copy of tonight's broadcast. First pitch swinging, fouled off by Caden Kim, the designated hitter for the Ukes, as we begin inning number five, deadlocked to two runs apiece. Hey, Sean, I just wanted to jump on real quick and give a thank you out to our great friends at the Latrobe Bulletin. I was uh, on TJ DeStefano's show today, Woo, uh, that will actually air tomorrow. DeStefano's Den, we were talking some high school football. This one smacked and it gets through out to right field, a leadoff single for Caden Kim. So while I was there, I uh, grabbed a copy of the bulletin from yesterday, and there was a preview story of the Teener League uh, Best of Three Championship here between Ukes and Rays. And at the end of the preview story, it said that uh, you can watch the games live on, on WSN. And we have just a great partnership with the bulletin. I know you do a lot of writing for them as well. Just want to thank uh, Randy Skubek, uh, Dan Schifo, Steve Kitty, whomever put that uh, little uh, information in there to let everybody know where they can watch the games. And Roger had mentioned Steve Kitty last night and his involvement with this league over the years. Sure. Swing and a miss that time by Gamir is the count 0 and 1. All right, good talk. See you out there. Roger back with the headset on. So after the leadoff single by Kim, Gamir, the number 10 hitter, trying to be productive here. It gets to the backstop, and Kim gets into second base. Now the wild pitch has really been a, a major factor all throughout this entire postseason for the Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League. It has pitchers trying their best to throw strikes, catchers doing their best to block it, but that one right there, lucky it did not strike Peyton Gamir. And that one well over the head of Gamir. So the extra hitter has a two and one count in his favor. Runner now at second in the form of Kim. The pitch, another one high. Ryan Harbert is on deck, representing the top of the order. You get the feeling maybe momentum shifting to the Uke side. Just a little bit as Fetter's pitch count continues to climb. There's a called strike. Gamir drew a walk in his first plate appearance. I'm sure he would love to have the same result here. Well, don't count on it. You have the bat. Make something happen. Don't leave it in the hands of the umpire. This one bounced. And that advances the runner to third. The throw to first base is in time, but Gamir productive because now Kim's standing at third, and with only one out, that could be crucial. Absolutely, Sean. There are outs, and there are productive outs. And that ground ball by... Peyton Gamir to the correct side of the infield to the second baseman, Riot advances the runner, Kim, to third base, allowing Harbert to do what he does. Well, what he does is take a first pitch ball from Fetter. Harbert 0 of 2 in this contest. Fly out and a pop out. The 1-0. Make it 2-0. Harbert was on base in all four of his at-bats last night. A pair of singles and reached on a pair of airs. Inside, not by much, but it goes to 3-0. and Landon Carnes on deck, he's 0 of 2. Harbert took a long look down at third base coach Mark Carnes. There's a called strike. Kim's hit in this fifth inning just the second hit of the game for the Derry Ukes. Yeah, Brandon Fetter's done a nice job in limiting the damage of the bats of the Ukes. But there's a ball four over the head of Harbert. He's aboard, runners at the corners, and with his speed, you can almost assume that he's gonna get to second base. Timeout called. 
Might that be it for Fetter? Well, he's at 70 pitches right now. Could be Batista coming in. No, well, Batista is jogging in from center field, Roger. And we watched him in an earlier game, Sean. He came in and shut down the FOE squad and got his team raised into the finals. So Batista taking over on the mound. It appears as though Jake Watson from third base will take over in the center field spot. And Fetter will go to third base. Well, if you're Fetter, you have to be really happy with the fact that you allow only two hits, but maybe a bit frustrated that you still allow the two runs and right now have also allowed two runners on base here with just one out in the fifth inning. Yeah, I would think he's probably pleased with what he did do by limiting the damage, as you said, Sean, but he's probably not pleased with the number of pitches that he did throw, 70 pitches, and a number of those were in the dirt, which permitted the Ukes runners to advance. Race, number two, Eric Batista. Well, Batista's an electric player in this league, Roger. You think that he might be amongst the best? I believe he is, particularly as a 14-year-old. He has one year remaining. Well, right now, he's probably looking for a strikeout. That would be optimum and what he has to keep in mind the speedy ryan harbert is also going to be at first base contact hitter landon carnes at the plate landon has flied out twice today wouldn't be surprised if we have a hit and run situation so fetter goes four and a third but again the book is not closed on him he's responsible for both runners on base at this point he cannot get the win but he could be charged with the loss, depending on what happens the rest of this frame. Only one out in the inning. Now batting Carnes 0 of 2. two David Carnes. on deck has yet to have an official at bat. He was hit by a pitch and has drawn a walk. Well, it's the meat of the order, certainly for the Derry Ukes. If they're going to score, it's going to happen now. Batista glances at first, now steps off. Perhaps hoping that Harbert would tip his cap, but I would think that Harbert's gonna be running. Here's a good shot there. He is, pitch misses, and it's thrown right back to Batista, so Harbert gets to second base with the steal. Two runners in scoring position now for the Ukes. Kim remains at third. Pitch in the dirt, gets away from Bush, but Kim stays put, as does Harbert. Harbert as the trail runner must be aware if Caden Kim stays, he cannot advance. If Kim goes, he can then go. 2-0 pitch. Make it 3-0. Batista missing away. David, Marichko, and Hill slated to follow. Bunch shown. Pulled back, ball four, bases loaded. So not the start that Eric Batista was hoping for. No, he inherited a pretty tough situation, and it's gotten just a little now bit tougher right now Zach with Zach David stepping to the plate. Batista quickly delivers. Misses away. Five consecutive balls by Batista. I would think David probably is going to wait before. May take wait, a strike. Wait. Yeah, he's going to wait for a strike before he swings, I should say. Now six in a row that have been outside the zone by Batista. It's 2-0. Oh. Working quickly, Batista comes home. He misses. Is it a case where he maybe needs to slow down, Roger? Yes, absolutely, Sean. He is really working fast. His windup is a little bit too quick. Seems a little bit out of control with his mechanics. The 3-0. Oh. A called strike makes it 3-1. Bases loaded. If Batista throws another ball here, the Ukes would take the lead. 3-1 pitch. Ball four. They do take the lead. A bases loaded walk drawn by Zach David. And that run is charged to Brandon Fetter. David gets the RBI. 
He'll gladly take it. Bases remain loaded as Kim scores. There's still only one out. And Marichko, pitcher for the Utes right now, can help himself out. Called strike two, Marichko, it's 0-1. Not surprising, I believe Mrichko and the Ukes will take a strike from Batista. That misses away. Mrichko reached on an air, walked and scored in his two plate appearances. He has a one and one count now. Swinging away, sends it out of play on the right side. One run on one hit and three walks so far in this fifth inning for the Ukes. They've taken the lead for the first time tonight at three to two. Smacked and that gets out to right field. It scores one run, Carnes makes the turn. Now he heads home and Carnes comes in as well. A big hit for Braden Marichko getting to third on the play is David. Nice piece of hitting by Braden Marichko, even better base running by Harbert and Carnes and Zach David. Take another look. A two run single. That one was probably going to be a ball to Marichko. There you see Landon Carnes coming around second, just kind of enjoying himself. Well, and he's, not stumbles. he's not enjoying that, Roger. Hopefully, he's okay. Pitch misses to Quinn Hill. Runner goes from first. Hill hits it in the air, right side. And it goes out of play. I believe there's a new right fielder. That is not Brad Hissom out there. We'll have to get the number as they come in. Let's see, is that Szymarski number one? Yes, it is number one. So Alex Szymarski playing out there. Throw to first and David nearly thought about breaking for home but thought better of it. Probably a wise decision. Well, the lead is five to two here for the Ukes. They've scored five consecutive runs in this game. Looking to add to it. In the dirt, runner goes. It gets away from the catcher, Bush. And now a break for home by David. And he slides in there safely. Getting all the way to third on the play is Marichko. Now he heads home. And the throw is in time as Marichko out for the second out of the frame. But David makes it six to two in the process. Well, I don't even know how to score that one, Roger. I guess the wild pitch allows David to score. Correct. Marichko to get to third. Nice hustle by Batista, as you can see it on the replay. Oh, and Batista went down. We've seen a couple players go down hard. Batista throws to third, and as that throw came to third, Marichko broke for home. The throw comes in. Two, one. A lot of dust there, hard to see if if he got in safely, but the out was called as Quinn Hill fouls this one back. So two outs, base is now empty for Quinn Hill, but four runs have come across in the frame for the Ukes. Yeah, once again, walks have come around to hurt. Now appeal to first, no swing for Quinn Hill. Payoff pitch upcoming from Batista. Hill bounces it to the shortstop, a high bounce for Ray. Throws across, low throw. And the first baseman, Starrett, couldn't hang on to it. No, Ray fielded it cleanly, a low throw. Thought that Starrett was going to be able to dig it out initially, Roger, but he just couldn't keep it in his glove. And then when he tried to lunge and get it, his foot came off the bag. Hills aboard on the air as the inning continues. Cole Zezzo takes that pitch high. Well, once again, Sean, here we are in the fifth inning. 
was the huge inning last night for the Ukes, once again in tonight's game. History seemingly repeating itself. It's now 2-0 to Zezo. This inning should have been over. There's a called strike. Two balls, one strike to Cole Zezo. Two, Two outs. Up, oh, jinx. Foul tip into the glove of Bush. Two hits in the inning, three walks, an error, a wild pitch. It all adds up to four runs so far for the Ukes. Well, as we said, Sean, 29 to 31% of the time, walks will come around to score. This one smacked into left field. Opposite way by Cole Zezo. Hill gets the second. You can almost feel the, the wind out of the sails of the Rays right now. Timeout is called. Rays will talk things over again. Now this is not the same Eric Batista that we saw a couple nights ago, and you can understand why, Roger, of course, at this point of the season. A lot of innings have been accumulated on these players' arms. That is correct, Sean, and as we have pointed out in sports at every level, people can sometimes have an off night as well. And right now, as good as Eric Batista was the other afternoon, struggling a little bit today. He is, by that same token, this inning should be over. How about a number 55, Fletcher Harvey. So now Fletcher Harvey digs in. Quinn Hill at second, Zezo at first. Swing and a miss by Harvey. I want to thank our great videographers, Kelly Nicely, TJ Belega here tonight as well. Pitch misses high. Producer Dan Flickinger pressing all the right buttons. And you, the fans, for tuning in to tonight's broadcast. Two and one now to Harvey. It's been a near nightmare frame here for Rays. Bounce to the shortstop, Luke Ray. Flips on to second. The force out does bring an end to the frame, but four runs come across in the stanza courtesy of two hits, an error, and two left on, left on base. It's now a 6-2 to two lead for the Derry Ukes. Six unanswered runs as we move to the bottom of the fifth, game number two in the best of three series here on the Westmoreland Sports Network. You're tuned in to the Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League Playoffs on the Westmoreland Sports Network. Join WSN throughout the Teener League postseason as we bring you all the exciting play-by-play -play action of every playoff game. The tying run crosses the plate. Here comes the second runner. He's being waved around. He scores. Each game broadcast features pre- and post-game shows featuring coaches and player interviews. All right, we will now welcome in Mason Septis. Just level head, hit the ball, stay calm, just treat it like any other game. Every game broadcast is archived on westmorelandsports.com where you can go back to watch and listen as often as you'd like. We're the Westmoreland Sports Network, and we're proud to be the broadcast home of the Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League Playoffs. When you begin planning enhancements to your kitchen or bathroom, let the local experts at Elite Plumbing Kitchens and Baths in Latrobe help you get started. Elite Plumbing Kitchens and Baths carries a full line of thoughtfully designed Moen faucets and shower heads, toilets by Toto and Mansfield, sinks, kitchen cabinets, even showers and bathtubs. Browse their vast showroom in the Route 30 Plaza, where you can talk to an incredible designer that will help you finally build the kitchen or bathroom of your dreams. Elite Plumbing Kitchens and Baths in the Latrobe Route 30 Plaza. A pull pass, a haircut, all being given out tonight. Hey, baseball fans, are you a fan of country and western music? The parents of Dean Watt, our home plate umpire this evening, 
are hosting a country and western music fest. Friday, August 2nd, and Saturday, August 3rd, free to the public at Hill Lake Acres. That's located in Salem Township, 425 Wolf Lake Road. How do you get to Hill Lake Acres? Get on 819 North and look for the signs for Hill Lake Acres. Country music begins Friday at 6, Saturday at 1. Well, the Dairy Ukes scoring six unanswered runs, two in the fourth and five in, or excuse me, four in the fifth, as this one is bunted by Batista. The throw, it is in time. Good defense by the Ukes, getting the speedy Batista to begin the bottom of inning number five. Yeah, real nice job defensively by the pitcher, Marichko, coming off the mound to get that ball. Pretty good bunt as well. Number five, that was not an easy pitch to bunt. But Batista got it down. Looked like he was going to have a chance to beat it out. It's always scary to see that, Roger. And I, I understand it's sort of a an instinct for players to slide into first on a close play. But usually it, it doesn't work to your benefit. and becomes a an injury risk as the offering misses to Watson. It's now one and one. Here to see the replay again of Batista sliding into a cloud of dust. And he seems to be fine, which is the good news. But... If you think about it, when you see Olympic sprinters, they don't slide at the end of the race. No, they do not. They run through. It's almost like you have to pull up to prepare yourself to slide. And the reason why at first base it doesn't make sense is because you were allowed to run through the bag, whereas at second, third, you really can't run through the bag. Now a 3-1 pitch up coming to Watson. Inside, Watson's aboard. So with... The four-run lead that Marich goes stake to, you figure his mindset is throw strikes, make Rays beat us by hitting the ball. So the one-out walk could be a little concerning for the Derry Ukes, especially with Luke Ray now stepping in, the number three hitter. Marich go over, looks at first, now comes home and finds the mark to Luke Ray. Three walks issued by Marichko to this point. He's at 69 pitches. Number 70 misses away. Well, if the Ukes do hang on, and there's certainly a lot of baseball left to be played with the Rays serving as the home team, is that pitch in there for a strike? You look back at the loss last year and maybe say that, while at the time wasn't something that they were happy about, maybe served as a benefit long term for this team. Well, they've definitely been on a mission this entire Teener League season. Pitch misses away. Good job of the catcher. Carnes snagging it. The count two and two. 72 pitches now for Marichko. You mentioned being on a mission. A lot of these players are back this year from a year ago. Is that one sent foul? Of course, there is some newcomers with Leo Bezela that we talked to last night, but you're feeling Roger when you get a good group of 13 and 14 year olds usually if it doesn't lead to a championship one year you bring a lot of those kids back you feel like you're, you're going to be able to get over the hump the next year Yeah, and as a coach you have to develop that young talent and a lot of the gentlemen up here do a fine job doing that curveball misses uh, we have a defensive switch Sean just occurred Nick Weil is now at second base he will be in for Peyton Gamir, who was the extra hitter. Leo Bezela will move to the extra hitting position. Payoff pitch. Hit to the shortstop and off of the leg of Harbert. It squirts into the outfield grass. Two runners aboard now, four rays. And that one was hit hard and might have deflected off of the shin of Well, we'll Harbert. see it here. Indeed. I would think they would call that an error, although I'm not sure what they put up on the scoreboard. I don't think it's been registered yet, Sean. Riyadh now batting. Two on, one out. That fastball high and tight. That'll wake you up. Nick Wilde just got here from his vacation. Looks like he cut it just a little bit short. Wanted to participate in this potential clinching game swing and a miss 
Well, when you say just got here, uh, I'm assuming you mean he literally just got here. He he did. He just got here, and they warmed up, and they inserted him right into the lineup at second base. Popped up. Foul. Might be playable. And now it does land on the roof of the press box out of play. There's a count one and two on Riot. One, two. The pitch from Marichko. Bounce towards first, but foul. Bravo. Pretty high offering there. Could have been ball two. I think you're right about that. Well, to the best of my knowledge, Roger, a hit has not been added in this inning, so I think it's going to be an error okay. on the one that allowed Luke, Luke Ray to reach. Fisted towards first, but didn't hang up long enough for Quinn Hill to make a play. He's shaking his hands is Riot. That one stings. Two on, and with the Rays down by four runs, they still are certainly well within striking distance, but you figure you want to get at least one run here in a scenario like this. Got to get one. You have Marichko at 80 pitches here in inning number five. Curveball bounced. Left side and through. Looks like David initially was breaking towards the bag. Now it gets past Harvey, and that's a big miscue. One run is in. Turning and getting to third is Ray. In the second is Riot. Brand new ball game. It's now 6-3. to three. Jake Watson scoring on the single. Lucas Ray advancing to third on the air on the left fielder, Fletcher Harvey. Harvey just overran it, it looked. Yep, maybe took his eye off for a split second. Swing and a foul ball by Fetter. So now a three-run game, but two in scoring position for Rays and one out. Let's see what Brandon Fetter can do for this Rays roster. He bounces it to Harbert. Harbert throws across. A run comes in on the play. Second out is recorded. It's now six to four. Yep, yeah, nice job there by Brandon Fetter helping his team out, getting the ground ball out. Derry Ukes, of course, will gladly trade in out for a run right now, get that second out of the inning. And that really shows how big that error by Harvey was. That run would not have scored. And now a wild pitch, a play at the plate, a collision, safe. Carnes tried diving back with the baseball to apply the tag, but Riot beat it out. It's now a one-run game. And a cloud of dust goes up. Well, that, man, that's a scary play for both catcher and runner. Yeah, that could have been very, very dangerous. They could have definitely locked horns, bumped heads, whatever you want to call it well, right I don't, there. I don't know what else Ria can do. He did everything right, but with a catcher diving towards home plate. And you see at the end, the helmet did get jarred a little bit there for Riot. Didn't. Hopefully he's all right. 1-0 goes behind the batter, Starrett. It's 2-0. Starrett wondering what the heck happened there. And now, my mistake, it's 3-0. You know, things have gotten very interesting here. Look at this last pitch. Oh, this is the, the wild pitch and the play at the plate. And it, yeah, he's safe. Seven, but oh, Starrett. you see the, the whiplash and then the, the foot, I believe, of Carnes yes. actually caught the helmet. And now a four pitch walk issued by Marichko. The tying run and Starrett is on base. 86 total pitches. That'll bring up Brad Hissom. Timeout called. Does Marichko get the opportunity to finish this inning? Well, let's see who, if he does not, who will come to the mound. Could be Harbert, who started last night's game, or it could be Nick Weil, who has spent some time on the mound, albeit just getting here moments ago. 
Well, whoever faces the next batter, which is Brad Hissom, it's going to be a pressure pack situation. Looks like it's gonna be Marichka who stays in there. He has 13 pitches left. Well, it's crazy, Roger, that the teams have combined for 11 runs despite combining for just eight hits. The six airs loom large for Brad both teams. Hissom. Four for the Ukes, two for the Rays. Called strike to Hissom. Hissom 0 of 2, reached on an air, struck out. Tying run at first base, bottom of inning number five. This one sent foul, it's now 0 and 2 to Hissom. No matter what happens the rest of this inning, if you're the Rays, you feel like you're right back in this game. Oh, you're only down by one run. You have six outs remaining, actually seven, counting one here in this inning. Pitch outside, one and two. See if he comes with a curveball. Count two and two. Rich goes now thrown 91 pitches and steps off. You cannot start in at bat once you get to 100. You can eclipse 100 if it's in the process of an at bat. Breaking ball, good job laying off by Hissom. It gets away from Carnes. Now into scoring position is the runner Sterrett. It goes into center field, but says they're there to back up. Now even a single might be able to tie this game. Sterrett gets his lead from second. Full count. The pitch. Uh. Fouled off by Hissom as he continues to battle against Marichko. Well, this Rays roster certainly not going down without a fight. 3-2. Inside ball four gets away from Carnes. Now runners at the corners for Rays. The go-ahead run is on base. Sterrett to third, Hissom to first. Catcher Colin Bush coming to the plate. And Marichka with 94 pitches. There's a now bat out here as well. Colin Bush. They're checking on Landon Carnes right now. Remember, he was also involved in that semi-collision earlier. And accounted for the fifth run for Rays when Ray scored. Pitch away, it's 1-0 to Bush. From Richko, you think this is probably your last batter no matter what. There's the pitch count, 95. Popped up, foul territory, and out of play. The pitch misses high, two and one. Got an email, Sean, from John Clemenza. Great job, guys. I love watching these games. I'm hoping for a game three tomorrow. Now certainly, Rays agrees with that sentiment. Hit in the air. Third base side foul territory, and it goes out of play just over the fence. Zach David gave chase, but ran out of room. The 2-2 pitch, swing and a miss. Down goes Bush, the tying run is stranded at third base. But Rays right back in it, courtesy of three runs in the frame on one hit, as well as a pair of errors and two left on base. A big strikeout for Marichko. His team takes a 6-5 lead to inning six here on the Westmoreland Sports Network. You're tuned in to the Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League Playoffs on the Westmoreland Sports Network. 
Join WSN throughout the Teener League postseason as we bring you all the exciting play-by-play action of every playoff game. The tying run crosses the plate. Here comes the second runner. He's being waved around. He scores. Each game broadcast features pre- and post-game shows featuring coaches and player interviews. All right, we will now welcome in Mason Septis. Just level head, hit the ball, stay calm, just treat it like any other game. Every game broadcast is archived on westmorelandsports.com where you can go back to watch and listen as often as you'd like. We're the Westmoreland Sports Network, and we're proud to be the broadcast home of the Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League Playoffs. When you begin planning enhancements to your kitchen or bathroom, let the local experts at Elite Plumbing Kitchens and Baths in Latrobe help you get started. Elite Plumbing Kitchens and Baths carries a full line of thoughtfully designed Moen faucets and shower heads, toilets by Toto and Mansfield, sinks, kitchen cabinets, even showers and bathtubs. Browse their vast showroom in the Route 30 Plaza, where you can talk to an incredible designer that will help you finally build the kitchen or bathroom of your dreams. Elite Plumbing Kitchens and Baths in the Latrobe Route 30 Plaza. We head to inning number six. Eric Batista remains on the mound for Rays. His team now trailing by a single run. 6-5 Six to five to Derry Ukes. Ukes taking game one, trying to close this series out tonight. Rays would love to send it to an early morning Saturday, game three, 9.30 start time if that is necessary. Always said that momentum was in favor of the Ukes after the top of the fifth, Roger, but the Rays have seemingly snatched a lot of that back. Yep. Very, very close game, Sean. Leo Bazela leading off for the Ukes, hitters eight, nine, and 10 as the first pitch misses to Bezela. We heard there's a change as well for Rays. Yeah, oh, Brad strike. Hissom, I believe, is now in left field, Sean. He is. Ethan Fry has exited the game. There's a call strike. Nick Hissom will now be the extra hitter. Ethan Fry unable to continue after being struck by that pitch. Breaking ball over the head of Bezela, who ducked out of the way. So hopefully Ethan's going to be okay. Bezela pops it up. Might be a difficult play, but it's caught by Sterrett for the first out. Now Batista would love a shutdown inning here. Got to have it if you're a fan of the Rays. Now batting number 27, Caden Kim. Caden Kim with the big hit to start off that inning, the last fifth inning. He takes the first pitch ball. Now Kim, one of two, a run scored. It's this one high in the air, shallow right field, the second baseman. Riot ranges out into the outfield grass to make the catch for the second out. Okay, that's going to bring up Nick Wow. Nick Wow appearing in this championship series for the first time. As we mentioned, he's been on vacation. Nick is from Hempfield area. First pitch swing and he comes up empty. Taking the spot of Gamir. Nick Wow, number 14. Inside. It's one and one to the extra hitter. Gamir walked and grounded out in his two plate appearances. Stung foul on the right side as Batista looks for a one, two, three frame. Ryan Harper at the top of the order on deck. One, two pitch, a bit up, it's now two and two. Batista continues to work quickly. That's his calling card. This one hit deep out to left field. That ball is over the head of the outfielder, Hissom. It's gone. It is out of here. A home run for Nick Wow. The late arrival extends his team's lead. It's 7-5. to five. Well, talk about making an appearance and making a turning point in a game, getting back from vacation. The Hemfield area Spartan, Nick Wow. 
call him Nick Wow after that hit. Wow. As he cleared the fence. And I lost sight of it for a second, Roger. I saw Hissom retreating back further. There was no doubt it was going to be extra bases, but goes over the left field fence. A big insurance run to make it 7-5. to five. And the disappointment on the body of Hissom. This is a comebacker to Batista, and Batista throws over to retire Harbert for the third out. But the damage done, one hit, a solo home run by Nick Wow. It is now seven to five in favor of the top seed at Ukes. They look to close it out tonight as we head to the bottom of the sixth, Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League Championship here on the Westmoreland Sports Network. Up is progress. Possibility. Trees, big old trees. Up is a national leader in mobile technology. UP is a world-class performing arts center. UP is 94% job and graduate school placement. When UP is what you're after, look to Seton Hill, a nationally recognized Catholic liberal arts experience that will push your life and career to the highest point possible. You can't make this stuff up. Attention fans, are you a social media nut? Well, so are we. Don't forget, you can get more information on your favorite Westmoreland sports teams by following us on Twitter and liking our page on Facebook. On Twitter, simply follow us at Westmoreland SN and then jump back to Facebook to like our page to get up to the second broadcast information, game results, stories, and interviews. Again, that's Westmoreland SN on Twitter and the Westmoreland Sports Network on Facebook. We know you're nuts about social media, so join us in the fun. Packers. Viking. Packers. Viking. Packers. Viking. Red state. Blue state. Vegan. Carnivore. We come from different places. Uptown. Downtown. Night Owl. Early bird. We come to different conclusions. Half empty. Half full. But when we live united, we create real, lasting change in the building blocks of life. The education, income, and health of our communities, <laughs> our families, united. even the person next to us. Live united. Real change won't happen without you. <laughs> so give, advocate, volunteer. Live united. Sign up at liveunited.org. You're listening to Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League Baseball on the Westmoreland Sports Network. A big solo home run, courtesy of Nick Weil, has extended the Dairy Ukes lead. It's now 7 to 5 as we move to the bottom of Leading inning number 6. Raid, number and plenty of changes for the Dairy Ukes, including a new pitcher, Landon Carnes, takes over after Braden Richko goes 5 innings. Landon Carnes on the mound. Zach David behind the plate. Ryan Harbert to second base. Nick Wow is the shortstop. That one sent out of play by Hissom, who's batting for the first time. That being Nick Hissom. Nick Hissom, like his brother, enjoys riding the quad. Takes that one inside. So Hissom batting for Fry who had to exit this contest, as Roger mentioned. It's two and one to Hissom. Carnes fires a strike, making the count two and two. Pretty good location there on the outside part of the paint. Plate from Landon Carnes, excuse me. Yeah. Outside part of the paint works as well. And that one now misses low and inside. The count goes full to the number nine hitter. This is Marski on deck. Swing and a miss. Down goes Hissom for the first out. And the first strikeout, obviously, for Carnes, who just entered the game. Take another look. Now batting number one, Alex. So this is Marski steps in. He's walked in this contest, also popped out. Bottom of inning number six. Uke's trying to close this series out. Popped up, foul, but playable for Hill. He's underneath it. He makes the catch for the second out. Good hustle, Quinn Hill. There's a good look at Quinn. 
Now batting number two, Eric Batista. Now back to the top of the order for Rays and Batista. Batista, yeah. believe it or not, 0 of 3 in this game. And that has been key in this game. Breaking ball misses the mark from Carnes. How big insurance, how big was that insurance run, Roger? Oh, that home run by Wow Wow was tremendous. Batista swinging for the fences, but got underneath it. Harvey in left field underneath the ball. Makes the catch, a one, two, three frame. No runs, no hits, no one left. We've played six, heading to the seventh. Ukes coming to bat. They hold a seven to five lead over Rays here on the Westmoreland Sports Network. The Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League was founded in 1968 and features players from 13 to 15 years old. The league has no geographic boundaries, which allows players from many different areas and school districts to participate. For complete standings, team rosters, photos, news, and league sponsors, visit the Latrobe Dairy Teener League online at www.ldatl.com. That's ldatl.com. You can also follow Teener League updates on Facebook. Good luck to the teams, players, coaches, and everyone that makes the Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League one of the top leagues in the state. Need to see a physician on the weekend? Excella Health Primary Care Weekends offer convenient medical care when your doctor isn't available. For minor illnesses and injury, Excella Health Primary Care Weekends open 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Saturday and Sunday in Latrobe Hospital, Excella Square at Norwin, and newest location in Greensburg behind Westmoreland Hospital. Walk in or make an appointment. To learn more, visit excellahealth.org, search weekend. Inning number seven, just about set to get underway. The Dairy Ukes could be three outs away from claiming the 2019 Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League Championship. Up one game to none in this best of three set and holding a seven to five lead here tonight at Rosa Oak Letty Park on the border of Latrobe and Derry. Landon Carnes slated to lead off for the Ukes. It's three, two, three, and four in the batting order to face Eric Batista. Roger, whether this is the last game or if the season concludes tomorrow, what a 2019 campaign it has been for this league. It certainly has once again. League has not disappointed. A lot of very, very good baseball, ages 13, 14, and 15, taking place in the Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League. First pitch misses to Landon Carnes. And a lot of these players don't just compete in this league, Roger. They do American Legion baseball. A lot of them already high school varsity players. Some travel ball, some middle school, junior high baseball players as well. Called strike, even the count of one and one. And as we've been mentioning throughout the broadcast last night and tonight, we've been trying to mention some other sports that some of these young men play. That ball is hammered to center field. Watson going back. It's off the fence, extra bases for Carnes. He's into second, standing up nearly a second home run for the Ukes. Instead, it goes for a leadoff double. What a charge Landon Carnes put into that one, Sean. I need to get some better glasses. I can't even see these balls landing deep in the outfield. How about number 22, Zach David? And that's some power because that was straight away and maybe even a little bit opposite field for Carnes as David sends this one out of play on the first pitch that he sees. Zach David, zero of zero, but has been on base all three times he's been to the plate. Zach David will appear, as you said, Sean, no official at bats, but yet a productive evening for the young man from Greensburg Central Catholic. Runner goes, ball hit in the air, foul might be playable, and now it does drift out of play on the third base side. Interesting decision to send Carnes there. Yeah, it was a big break. That ball did get out of play, Sean. If it did not get out of play, it may have been caught by the third baseman, Fetter, or the pitcher, Batista. Landon Carnes would have been easily doubled up. Now Batista looks back the runner, but Carnes barely budged. Standing with hands on hips, this one hit out to center field. Diving effort, the catch is made. Spectacular play by Watson. 
back to second base is Carnes. Oh, what a great, great defensive play by the now center fielder, Jake Watson. There's a good look at him and a, a smile well-deserved on his face. Yeah, we'll see the replay of that fine, fine catch. And the ball was tailing away from him. Spectacular. Now Marichko. Misses away to Marichko. He's batting with Carnes at second base. One out here in the top of inning number seven of a seven inning regulation game. Pretty good velocity from that pitch from Batista. Speaking of velocity, you can hear the glove pop in there. Four Rays, hitters two, three, and four to bat in inning number seven, the bottom of the seventh. Sprayed on the first base side, but it drifts out of play. And seemingly sounds like it hit a vehicle. Hopefully it's not mine, because I'm down there somewhere. One, two. No, fingers crossed for you, Roger. No, thanks. That pitch misses high. Good job by Bush snatching it. That's why we have eerie insurance. Time out. Now as pitcher and catcher want to get on the same page. And that pause in action allows Marichko to go talk to his coach. There we go, batter. Now you feel pretty confident if you're the Ukes with a two-run lead heading to the bottom of seventh, but a three-run lead would be even better, certainly. Oh, without a doubt, the more, the better. 2-2. Two -two. Swing, a foul tip, and it pops out of the glove of Bush as Marichko got just enough. Staying alive is Braden Marichko. Marichko started this game on the bump for the Ukes. Pops that one up in the infield. Short stop. Ray makes the catch for out number two. And now Quinn Hill. Quinn Hill looking for his first hit of this contest, 0 of 3. As the young bat boy comes sprinting off the field. Got a lot of youngsters involved with these teams as well, Roger. Yeah, Maybe future and, and players. The, absolutely. Hill, first pitch swinging, but it's foul. And I don't know if you're picking it up right now, but we can hear it clear as day. Some of the teammates saying this might be your last at bat. For the 15-year-olds that will be moving on, Roger, that is a reality that now potentially sets in. That is correct. In the dirt, away from the catcher, Bush. To third standing up is Carnes. Now with two outs, he stands 90 feet away. 90 feet away, they are not replacing the pitcher Landon Carnes with a courtesy runner. They want his speed on the base path. You have to wonder if there's another near wild pitch, would he break for home? 1-1. One, one. Misses away, it's 2-1. and one. We've seen the power for the Ukes the last two innings. This is another player who can provide that attribute. The pitch. Three and one. Got a message from Freddie Dutch Mueller. Enjoy watching some really good quality baseball over there in Westmoreland County. Good luck to all the players in the future. Ball four, Hills aboard. Now runners at the corners. Pretty good batter coming to the plate. Cole Zezo has two hits today. Now batting number 19, Cole Zezo. The third walk issued by Batista. We'll see if Zezo can make him pay. First pitch swinging out to center field and deep. Watson going back. He has a beat on it, makes the catch right in front of the warning track for out number three. No runs in the frame despite one hit two left on base we head to the bottom of the seventh ukes could be three outs away from hoisting the championship they hold a seven to five lead over rays as we continue latrobe dairy area tina league championships here on the west Wallen sports network
I had to pick one thing that I would do over and over again from a business perspective, it would be locating in Westmoreland County. Uh, people here are very talented. They're great, hardworking people. It's an excellent place to run a business. The Westmoreland County Chamber of Commerce has given us the ability to uh, network with other businesses here in the, within the county, brought us great exposure within the county and in neighboring areas. And uh, we've really seen it add to the diversity of our client base. When you begin planning enhancements to your kitchen or bathroom, let the local experts at Elite Plumbing Kitchens and Baths in Latrobe help you get started. Elite Plumbing Kitchens and Baths carries a full line of thoughtfully designed Moen faucets and shower heads, toilets by Toto and Mansfield, sinks, kitchen cabinets, even showers and bathtubs. Browse their vast showroom in the Route 30 Plaza, where you can talk to an incredible designer that will help you finally build the kitchen or bathroom of your dreams. Elite Plumbing Kitchens and Baths in the Latrobe Route 30 Plaza. Westmoreland County's broadcast home for high school sports, the Westmoreland Sports Network. We head to the bottom of inning number seven as we've received a message from the, the Calabrese family. Great game, uh, Jake Joe, Lloyd. Thank you so five, much Jake for Watson. tuning in, sending the messages. Three outs remain potentially for the home team, number two seed Rays. They need to score two runs to extend the game three to walk it off. Jake Watson taking a first pitch ball from Landon Carnes. Now sent to the backstop. Ukes taking game number one last night. Final score in that one, nine to three. And trying to secure the series sweep to claim gold. In the dirt, it's two and one. Roger, we got plenty of goodies for you here. Well, maybe we can share that with some members of our audience, our crowd. Maybe some of our videographers would like a bit of a treat I'm as not, well. I'm not the sharing type when it comes to ice cream sandwiches, Roger. I'm going to. Well, you know what? Then you can have that. mine, Sean. I would never steal yours. No, you. I am offering it <laughs> to you. 3-1 pitch in the dirt. Ball four. Well, if you wanted a good start to the bottom of the seventh, the leadoff walk will do the trick for Rays. Watson's aboard. Well, that's all you can ask for, an opportunity. Now batting number 12, Luke Ray. Now it's Luke Ray, and just a two-run deficit. Ray's the type of hitter that could certainly come through here. Riot, the cleanup hitter on deck, first pitch away. Good job by Zach David in his second inning as the catcher to grab that one. Well, Zach David has played left field today, third base, and now behind the plate. A 1-0. That's 2-0. As good as Carnes looked last inning, he's fighting it a little bit here. He certainly is. That's close. Stung foul on the first base side. The count 2-1 and one from Carnes to Luke Ray. Watson at first. Ray the tying run at the plate. The pitch. Just low. It's three and one. Braden Riot on deck. Ball four. It gets to the backstop. The first two runners aboard, courtesy of the free pass. The tying run now on at first. Riot, he's been successful tonight, Roger. Two of three, a pair of singles. Now timeout. You know, if you, you think you have a better option to come in and pitch one inning, you use that here if you're the Ukes. Yeah, I would agree with that, Sean. You might want to go with Nick Weil, who just got here. Now, Landon Carnes is a very, very competitive young man by his nature but with that being said he also wears his emotions out on his sleeve and we saw that with some of the calls made by the home plate umpire he tended not to disagree with them or he tended to disagree with him excuse me and it also seemed to play and now he's fighting his own head at the moment 
because uh, things not going his way. What he needs to do now, do not worry about striking everybody out. Pitch to contact the way the pitchers of the Utes have done majority of this season and get three outs, but we'll see what happens as Rays will have a say in all this. Called strike to Riyadh who was showing bunt. There's another strike. Brandon Fetter on deck. Carnes looking to put away Riot. Misses low. Nice job by Riot not offering at that pitch. Watson at second, Ray at first. They both walked. It's a two run lead for the Ukes. Bounce foul. Pretty good battle here. Well, at this point, Carnes, no matter what happens, he's not going to be pitching the rest of this season. As it's off of the glove of David, no advancement, however. So Carnes over 20 pitches. He would not be able to pitch tomorrow, Roger. Right. So you figure at this point, if he's your best option, keep him out there. Let him try to close this one out. He misses there, however, as the count goes full. No one out in the inning. And Carnes looks like he's laboring. Well, we've seen this race team battle back, Sean, against FOE. Payoff pitch. Ball four, three consecutive walks. The bases now loaded. Brandon Fetter to the plate. Number three, Brandon Fetter. Fouled back. Better went after the first pitch. It was in the zone, but he couldn't put it in play. Pretty good idea with Karn struggling to throw some strikes. Better wanted to take a hack at the first good pitch. Tying in, winning runs on base. Another one sent to the backstop, almost identical to count 0 and 2. Karn's working quickly. Bounce to the shortstop. The throw goes to first, so the out is recorded, but now the tying run is at third base and there's just one out. Watson scoring on the play. Luke Ray to third. Braden Riott to second. I would thought with the infield up, you would go to the plate with that one. Well, I think Wow wanted to, but maybe wasn't sure that he was going to get it there in time. A called strike to Sterrett. Tying run at third, winning run at second, one out in the bottom of the seven, four Rays. Called strike, 0-2, oh nothing that Carnes and the Ukes would love more than a strikeout here. Yeah, get an out without getting the ball in play, nor runners advancing. Popped up in the infield. The catch is made for out number two by Carnes, and now the Ukes one out away from the championship. And Brad Hissom stands in the way. So Hissom steps in. Can he keep the game and the season alive? First pitch misses away. Luke Ray at third, the tying run, the winning run. Braden Riott is at second, two outs, the 1-0. Swing and a miss, hits him late on that offering. Carnes working at a feverish pace, misses high. It's two and one to hiss him, Colin Bush is on deck if this inning and this game continues. The 2-1. It's hit out to right field and a sliding catch to win it by Nick Stump as the Ukes are the 2019 champions on a terrific defensive play. 
What a catch by Nick Stump in right field on a well-struck ball by Brad Hissom. This game is over. One run in the frame, no hits, and two left on base. Let's take another look. Hissom put a good swing on it, lined it to right field. Stump ranging please. over, time, lunging, like a sliding catch on his knees. Off the field. He's able to hang Close on, holds the glove high, and the 2019 champs the are the Derry Ukes. Put that ball away for safekeeping. Nick Stump. What a game, what an ending, and what a season for the Derry Ukes. As we'll we keep it right here as they're going to do a ceremony for these teams, including the 2019 champs. Both Rays and the Derry Ukes coming out onto the field as they will do the traditional handshake line. That's a tough one to swallow for Rays. Nearly had the chance to win. And had that ball gotten down, you figure that would have been the winning hit, Rays would have walked it off and sent this to a decisive third game. But instead, they come up just short, falling in this contest seven to six, the final score in favor of the Derry Ukes. Sean Roger went upstairs to, uh, he's going to announce the names and the trophy ceremony for both teams, and we're going to be carrying that here live on WSN. But wow, when that ball came off the bat, producing here you you could see the great and people watching too our, our center field camera shot of that when it came off the bat I was almost a hundred percent sure that was going to land into right field and we were going to be playing tomorrow but what an amazing catch if we want to take a look at it uh, one more time you'll see the ball coming you know off the bat here and it, and it looks like for sure a base hit to right field and remember there's two outs so the runners are going on contact so the runner from second likely would have scored but uh, just an amazing catch in right field, a sliding grab. And um, we apologize, it's a little bit blurry. When our camera's right behind the netting like that, it tends to, especially when the nighttime falls, I don't know why that is, when it, when it gets dark out, it, it, it gets a little bit tough to zoom in. It gets a little blurry here and there. So uh, we do apologize for that. But uh, wow, just a tremendous uh, ending to this game. Every time you get in the last inning, it's always interesting at any level, teen or league. Major League Baseball, college baseball, that last inning is the, always the toughest three outs to get. And uh, it was just uh, a great way of closing it out, despite a little bit of rockiness there for Mr. Carnes. If you are a member or a fan of this race squad, you have to be very proud of the effort, but ultimately a heartbreaking way for this one to end. Seven to six in favor of the Derry Ukes. Let's take a look at how this game unfolded. Ray scored a run in the bottom of inning number two. Matt Sterrett, a one-out infield single. He scored on an RBI ground out by Ethan Fry to put the home team, the number two seed Rays, up 1-0. They added to that in inning number three. Luke Ray also with an infield single, and he later scored on an E7 in that frame. So it was 2-0 in favor of Rays after three innings, but in the fourth, the Ukes pulled even. Zach David, Brady Marichko drew walks to open the frame. They scored on a one-out two-run single by Cole Zezzo, making it 2-2. Two to two. And then much like yesterday, the fifth inning, working in favor of the Ukes, they score four times as Caden Kim led off with a single. He scored Ryan Harbert, who walked, scored Landon Carnes, who walked, scored Zach David, who walked, scored. The big hit in the inning, Braden Marichko, a two-run single to right field. That plated both Harbert and Carnes, and then David himself scoring on a wild pitch to make it 6-2 to two in favor of the Derry Ukes, but Rays responded with three runs in the bottom half of that frame. Jake Watson led off with a walk. Luke Ray reached on an air. Braden Riott provided an RBI single, and then Brandon Fetter provided an RBI single of his own. Riot later scored on a wild pitch, making it 6-5. to five. A big insurance run in inning number six, however, for the Derry Ukes. The late arriving Nick Wilde, just back from vacation, blasted a home run. Let's take a look at that one 
as his first and only at bat of the game, he sends over the left field fence for a solo shot in inning number six coming off of Batista. That made it seven to five, and that proved incredibly and, crucial. And check out the At celebration time, here, Sean. Welcome, please, <laughs> Flexing. So you got to like, just come back from vacation, get to the plate, and hit a bomb. And, at this time, we <laughs> and would that was like definitely needed because in the bottom of the seventh, the Rays did very, score a run. Jake Watson led off with a walk. A he scored an RBI ground out by Brandon Fetter. But again, Brad Hissom could have been the hero, looked like he was going to be the hero, if not for a spectacular catch out in right field for Nick Stump to account for the final score of 7-6. to six. We'll now and turn now, it over to the PA announcer for the ceremony. The players of the Dairy Ute, number one, Leo Bazela. Players could please line up in the rear of the mound, please, and circle around the mound. That would be terrific. Number two, Landon Carnes. Yes, Number three, Ryan Harbor. Number four, Peyton Gamir. Number 12, Nolan Plummer. I believe he's absent this evening. Number 14, Nick Wild. Number nine, Quinn Hill. Number 16, Jake Lloyd. Number 19, Cole Zezzo. Number 21, Brayden Marichko. Number 22, Zach David. Number 24, Caleb Lachlan. Number 26, Nick Stump. Number 27, Caden Kim. Number 55, Fletcher Harvey.
Them two guys are the sponsors of the Ukes. Okay, currently with Mike Self getting some photo opportunities representing the Dairy Ukes. Two wonderful young men, we'll call them young, who have put a lot of time and effort into making sure that Dairy Ukes do indeed sponsor a team each and every year. Thank you, Dairy Ukes. Okay, Kevin, if you want to get a team photo. Stevenson, photographer for the league, will also be taking a photo or two. Thank all fans in attendance for their patience as we try to keep this ceremony organized. On behalf of the Lake Oak Dairy Area Senior League, I thank you. At this time, I encourage and open up the gates to all fans, parents of the Dairy Utes to please come down, take some photos, so someday from the year 2019, you can take a stroll down memory lane. We are 2019 Lake Joe Dairy Area Senior League champion, the Dairy Utes. Uh, the president of uh, the uh, Ukes is Dave Fuzzy Hauser and uh, Officer George Philippi. That's what they told me to tell you. Dave Hauser representing Dairy Ukes, president. And George Philippi as well. Thank you, gentlemen, for making an appearance here this evening at our Lake Joe Dairy Area Senior League, Rosa Ogaletti Park. This reminder, if you have not had your fill of Lake Oak Dairy Area Senior League, there will be an all-star game here. Roger Downs he does it all. his money worth. He does it all. He does color. He does PA. Well, Ray LeVay couldn't be here tonight, so Jack filled in for him, and now Roger's filling in for Jack. But uh, getting a shot right there. From TJ Belega of all of the parents taking pictures and certainly a special time for the players and for the parents, something they'll never forget. And I'm sure something Nick Stump will never, ever forget. The amazing catch if you tuned in late. Uh, Derry Ukes wins the game by the final score of 7-6. to six. And uh, it was thanks to this catch with runners on base, second and third. Or actually the bases were loaded, correct, Sean? Second and, second third. and yep. third. Okay, the winning the run time. at second base, though, which right. is all that really mattered. And Nick Stump makes the catch in right field, and the uh, celebration was on for Derry Ukes. And you guys, I know, had talked about this a couple of times, but Ukes came so close last year trying to beat a very good heat siphon team a season ago in the championship, and they took them to three games. And it's tough in a league like this, Sean, to make the championship two years in a row because 
you lose so many 15-year-olds from year to year. So just like Heat Siphon last year, they almost made the playoffs this year, but they lost a lot of 15-year-olds off of last year's team. They didn't even make the playoffs this year. For Ukes to do what they did last year and then to come back this year and win the championship, uh, I think says a lot about the talent on this team. Last year they were somewhat young. This year they had a lot of veterans. And, uh, of course, next year, you know, it'll, it'll be uh, – they'll lose a lot. It'll be difficult. But uh, to be able to get to the championship two years in a row, take Heat Siphon to three games and then sweep Rays uh, really is an impressive feat for Mike Self. And we saw some representatives from Derry Ukes as well. I'm sure they're very proud of uh, this team too. So this is uh, certainly something that the players will never forget, and we're very happy to be helping uh, capture it. If you missed any of the broadcast, if you missed any of our broadcast the last two years for Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League, all you have to do is go to the archives to watch and listen back to any game broadcast that you may have missed, or if you want to go back and re-watch. Uh, we talk to a lot of different parents on the sports that we cover that watch the games live here, and then they'll go back home, and maybe the next day, maybe later on tonight, they'll go back and watch the game that they just watched live. They'll go back and watch the broadcast. So WestmorelandSports.com uh, on our archives. You can click on Broadcast and cycle down to Teener League, or on the top menu bar where it says Programs, you can uh, hover over that, and a drop-down menu will appear, and you click on Teener League Baseball, and you can go back and watch the uh, the archives or listen to the games as well. And uh, I know we're going to be having some interviews here coming up. Uh, Sean always does such a tremendous job of talking to the kids and the coaches. I don't know. Mike didn't want to be interviewed yesterday, so we'll see if Coach Self will want to uh, be interviewed today. <laughs> I don't know. We might be able to get him over here. And uh, who when, you when you look at Ray's, uh, you mentioned the point that Derry Ukes was able to bounce back from falling short in the championship. Rays has a lot of good players slated to come back next year, 13- and 14-year-olds. So there's certainly some uh, maybe a silver lining in this loss to the Derry Ukes. You hope that the Rays say, okay, well, we saw the Ukes bounce back from a championship loss and turn it into a win this year, and then maybe we could do the same thing next year. Great experience, though, and a great series as well. It only went two games, but you felt like both of these games were toss-ups for the majority. Of course, the Ukes broke it open late in the fifth inning last night and then tonight coming down to the final pitch of the game. So a really good two-game series, and uh, overall, I, I think a really nice playoff. There were some games that weren't the prettiest games, but when you look at it as a whole, some great baseball played amongst these 13, 14, and 15-year-olds. Well, 2019, your champs, the Derry Ukes, as they score the 7-6 victory here over Rays. The top two teams made it to the championship, and it turned out to be a heck of a series with the victory. 22 wins this season for the Dairy Ukes, 22-6-1. The Rays finish at 18-10, and and for a lot of these players, they get maybe a couple weeks off, and then they start turning their attention to other sports that begin in the fall. Yeah, sports, school, um, and some of them will be heading to vacation. What a way to celebrate, huh? Maybe they'll take their trophy with them. I don't know. Put it on the beach maybe, get some pictures of it with, uh, with the trophy and with the guys there. Uh, the reason that the game tomorrow, and it almost was necessary, that it would have started at 930 is because there is a lot of Ukes players that are going on vacation tomorrow. And basically, if they would have had the game later, um, they might have had to forfeit because that's how many players scheduled their vacation. Remember... The, this championship series should have been played maybe a week ago or longer, uh, Sean. Yeah, there's a chance it could have started on Monday. Well, not only that, but they pushed the regular season back. So the regular season should have ended maybe four days early or something like that than it did because of the rain during the regular season games. And so we had that, the regular season getting pushed back. And then, of course, the, uh, the rain and the lightning, which uh, suspended the game, and then it ended up suspending it for a couple of days in that semifinal. And so um, it, it, it's, it's a case of where, you know, families try to schedule their vacations around baseball, but when the regular season gets pushed back and then the playoff games gets pushed back, it makes it sort of difficult to do. So I'm sure there are a lot of satisfied Ukes parents uh, that this game ended certainly today as uh, Tom Bacho comes over. And There's the MVP right yeah, there. Yeah, the true MVP. I mean, where's your where's your trophy, Tom? I mean, that's that's who needs to get it. Uh, 
Tom brings us over everything, man. I mean, and, and he brings us, he said, don't let the ice cream sandwiches melt. No, I'm going to eat it, trust me. Ice cream sandwiches, pepperoni rolls, chicken fingers, and gummies. That's what we had I've today. already eaten my chicken fingers and the gummies, so I'm just waiting on the <laughs> ice on cream the blue sandwich. bunny bar. Yep. Yeah, hopefully it's not going not gonna to melt. Um, but Tom, just a tremendous person not only bringing over the food but uh, he anything that we need I mean he's always telling us anything you need let me know let me know let me know so uh, great to have uh, his support and of course Dean Watt and Terry Stevenson there are so many things that go on behind the scenes here to make this league run and to help our broadcast out Ray LaVey oh my gosh I mean there's just so many people that are so so hospi uh, hospitable to us and we really want to thank them I'm going to put the headsets down here Sean we're going to be joined I believe by Cole Zezzo and Nick Stumpf, maybe Coach uh, Self as well. So I'm going to step away here for a moment as we kind of get everything uh, configured so you can talk to the guys, all right? Just give, give me a couple of uh, – well, not a couple of minutes. Just give me a minute. Yeah. So we will welcome in two of the star players for the Dairy Ukes, Cole Zezzo and Nick Stump, who were integral parts in tonight's 7-6 victory. As uh, once again, the 2019 champs, the Dairy Ukes, and they secured the victory in thrilling fashion here tonight, coming down to literally the final pitch of the game to secure the victory over Rays. Congratulations to everyone involved with the Ukes, including Mike Self. We mentioned the manager of this squad. As we're getting the crowd mic set up, to talk to some of the victorious players. All right, who's jumping in first? All right, we will now welcome in both Cole and Nick. We good to go? All right, we're now joined by Cole Zezzo as well as Nick Stump, two of the champions for the Dairy Ukes. We'll begin uh, with you, Cole. Uh, you come up with a couple of hits in this game, the big two-run single in inning number four. Your team really battled back after a slow start offensively. Did anything change over those final four innings as opposed to the first three? The final four innings, we just tried to be, kept, to be focused more, and we, we focused on not popping up as much, and we just wanted to make solid contact, not get those loopy swings in anymore. How much of a confidence builder was last night's victory? Because it was a tie game until the fifth, you guys exploded for six runs, and then you were able to do kind of the same thing tonight coming from behind in those middle innings again. We were pretty confident coming into today's game. I don't think any of us thought we weren't going to win. We uh, just focused on our mechanics and just kept uh, making the simple plays. Nick Weil uh, arrived a little late, but uh, he made an impact. Yeah. He gets one at bat, clears the fences. How big was that boost when he got out onto the field? That was a big boost to us. Uh, we just we, we There we thought we... Uh, just had to make those simple plays, and we uh, just knew we could win it there because we got a couple-run lead, and we knew we just had to stay focused. What did uh, winning this in two games mean to you? Because I'm sure you did not want to have to come back early tomorrow morning yeah. for a, a crucial third game. Um, well, we, we, it helped us a lot because we didn't have to waste pitching, and we could use all of our pitching tonight, and it just gave us uh, more of a better chance to win. Mike Self, the manager for this team, how has he helped – your team grow throughout this season? He keeps us really upbeat and happy all the time. He uh, he doesn't really yell. He only he just gives us good advice all, all game, every game. Talking to Cole Zezza, were you a part of the team last year? Yes, I was. So coming up short of the championship, what was the mindset all throughout this season? Uh, well, we just tried to uh, like keep improving and working all season and just to think that we could come back and win it. Um, we. The, the entire season, we just tried to, try, try to stay motivated. There was a, a big celebration out there. It's still going on now. Uh, what did this moment mean to you, and how are you planning to celebrate uh, going forward? Um, well, this moment is really special because I love all the guys on the team. And going forward, we're going to go to the Ukrainian club and probably just eat a whole bunch. All right. Well, you certainly deserve it. Uh, you get to spoil yourself a little bit. Cole Zezo comes up with a pair of big hits tonight in the victory for the Dairy Ukes. We'll now welcome in Nick Stump, who joins us. Nick, uh, I think unsung hero would be the, the term for you heading into this game, but unsung no more. You uh, certainly were a focal point. You make the final out with a, a catch that really I didn't think was possible to be made. It looked like it was going to be clearly a hit off the bat. How did you read that as soon as it was hit? 
I saw it hit, and I thought it was going to be a line to the second base, and then, and then it carried out, and I lost it in the light, but I saw it last second, and laid out, and I got it. And you had a little bit of a celebration, but uh, what, like, what flashed in front of you once that ball ended up and stayed in your glove? I just closed my eyes, and I'm just so happy, and I put the ball, put it in my back pocket, and I just kept it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I saw. So what was what was the decision behind keeping that ball? Um, I kept it because it was a pretty, it's going to be a pretty, uh, I'll remember that for a while. Um, winning the championship off a nice catch like that, I'll remember that for a while. Let's talk about your defense. Uh, how has that become a strength for you, and what do you do to improve uh, throughout the course of the season in that area? Um, I just stay, pra keep practicing, working on it, and got to thank all the coaches to thinking and making me come to all the practices and making me get better. Talking to Nick Stump, who had the final out with a great catch out in right field. The team defense tonight wasn't great before that, that final play. Do you ever, obviously, offensive and pitching um, maybe get into slumps, but fielding, is it the same type of thing where you kind of have to work through something like that? Yeah, you just got to stay focused and you got to always know if the ball comes to you where you're going with it and just stay focused, keep your head in the game. What's your favorite part of playing for this team? All the teammates, all the teammates and the coaches. Got to thank the 15-year-olds. They are best teammates I've ever had. And uh, what's uh, what's the goal now going forward? Obviously, you guys get to enjoy this one, but uh, how quickly before you turn your attention either to other sports or maybe baseball again? Um. Well, I've got football in the fall, but still always going to keep practicing up, playing with baseball. So can get better and improve for next year. All right, that was Nick Stump, one of the heroes. If you want to slide in and grab the mic now, we'll welcome in Braden Marichko as well. Braden, the starting pitcher in this one for the Derry Ukes, also came up big at the plate. Two-run single in inning number five. Uh, second straight night that the fifth inning was the turning point for your offense. What did you see change uh, from your squad over the middle innings of this game? Um, I don't know. We just, like, we were hitting a lot in the fifth inning. And then we saw an opportunity, we took it, scored a lot of runs. Your team was the number one seed, the best team all season long. Does that create confidence that even when you're trailing in a game like this, a pressure situation, that you know that you guys eventually are going to come through? Well, you got to keep the confidence in that, but you can't get like full of yourself for being number one. Like you got to keep going and just bring it home, you know? You guys were able to bring it home in dramatic fashion. Uh, when you saw that catch made uh, by Nick, what was the reaction? Did you think he was going to be able to catch it when it left the bat? I mean, I thought it was in the gap at first, but then I saw him dive for it, and I just, like, threw my glove up in the air, started screaming and running after him, you know? It was great. You started this game on the mound before Landon Carnes came in uh, in inning number six, took over. The fifth inning, I thought, was very interesting because you were able to stay out there even though you were laboring, you were getting close to 100 pitches. Yeah. What yeah. was the conversation like, and how did you find a way to get through that fifth inning? Well, I just, I don't know, I was going downhill a little bit and then I just started throwing strikes and found my rhythm and got out of it. Is it as much mental as physical as a pitcher at this point in the season knowing that you've thrown a lot, mm -hmm. but you need to just grind out another at bat, another inning, things like that? Yeah. Um, yeah, you just got to finish it off. Just can't think about it a lot. Just got to, like, just go with it, you know? What's the... Uh, what was the mindset after you guys came up short uh, at this point a year ago? Was it something that you immediately said, we're going to make sure we get over the hump next year? Well, yeah, I thought that, but I was also only 14. So, you know, we still had another year coming, just work harder, get back at it. Uh, anything that stands out in particular uh, about this team? Um, yeah, um, they're like kind of like a family to me, second family. I like them a lot. They're good guys to hang around, you know. It's just fun to be with them. And I know uh, a lot of the players uh, had some other obligations, vacation, things of that nature. Yeah. How are you spending the rest of your summer before you head back to school? Uh, I got a little bit of a travel league left and then school. So you still got more baseball to be played. Yep. Well, certainly you came through in a big way tonight. Braden Marichko, the starting pitcher, also one of the offensive heroes for the Dare Ukes. Also want to thank Nick Stump as well as Cole Zezo for joining us here on the post game. All right, guys, thanks so much for those interviews. We appreciate it. Great talking to a trio of champions for the Dairy Ukes. Once again, 
a 7-6 to six final score in their favor. And we thank Nick Stump, Cole Zezzo, and Braden Marichko for joining us. Also want to thank everyone that helped make this possible with the Westmoreland Sports Network crew. Here's a good look at Roger Downs. Also Kelly Nicely, TJ Belega manning the cameras. And then our producer, Dan Flickinger, doing a great job as always. Uh, just a terrific uh, couple of weeks of postseason baseball here for the Latrobe Dairy area. Teener League, any final thoughts that you want to put on this one, uh, Dan and Roger, as he wanders and kisses more babies and shakes more hands as he's a basically a he's celebrity a politician. Here. Yeah. He uh, did uh, – no. how many hats did you wear today, Roger? Uh, today, Dan, I wore Five. several hats. You know what? <laughs> but it's great to do it for these young men their families, and the Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League. And I couldn't be happier with the results. Uh, people are already talking about, hey, are you guys coming back next year? I know people are trying to get us to come back for some regular season games as well next year. I said that's all to be determined. That's way above my pay grade. <laughs> well, we're definitely – we'll be happy to be here right. uh, if, if the Latrobe Area Teenier League will have us. Last year, I thought – Especially that, uh, when we get some of these for free, right? Yeah, <laughs> the championship. But, yeah, what do we have? So this is, this is what we were talking about. Pepperoni rolls, gummies. Everything else has been consumed at this point. Ice cream sandwich. We also had chicken fingers as well. Those are and, gone. And, and here comes – and, and now, now, look, this is, what, this is what happens during the games. Tom Batcho comes over. We have pop now. Uh, as you. they say in Western PA, not soda pop. Um, Thank you. And this is what we're usually doing. We're trying to figure Thanks, out guys. why we don't have enough space for all this stuff. Thank you so and much, And there Tom. he is, Tom Batcho, ladies and, how, and gentlemen. And, and I like the your man, shirt, The man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> That's a great shirt. Oh, man. It's, it really is. Tom just said it's all for the kids. And it. It, it really is, yeah. He wanted to get in the pride of Youngstown, Ohio in there, too. He wanted to give a shout-out. Yeah, and he's uh, a big Ohio State Buckeye fan as well. Also had the original Cleveland Indians mustard that he gave us. It's still upstairs, it's still, I believe. I think, it's I think still Kelly up didn't bring it down. <laughs> but, uh, well, we, well, Flick, I think this is a good opportunity for those who maybe are tuning in for the first time that while we're kind of wrapping up the summer and really the spring sports, we're going to get started in the fall pretty soon, and then we're going to yeah. have a, a busy 2019-20 school year. I had mentioned on the broadcast a little bit earlier that I was on TJ DeStefano's uh, show, which is going to be airing tomorrow morning on WCNS. Uh, we are already talking about high school football. It really is amazing. Every year, it just somehow starts up, and you're like, wait a second, it's the first week of the high school football season? What's going on? We have week zero coming up. Uh, we have our Permani Brothers coaches show that we do every year where we interview 11 or 12 Westmoreland County coaches. That will be on uh, Sunday, August 18th at 6 o'clock, live video broadcast. Uh, if you want to come out to Permanis, you can do that too and watch the show live. Uh, but we'll have up to seven broadcasts every Friday night coming up in the fall. We'll have our Westmoreland on the Gridiron show coming up uh, again this season that we started last year every Wednesday night. Um, we have our Monday notebook that Sean does. We have a Westmoreland County Q&A every week, alumni Q&A, I should say, more specifically. We have our college commitment page College as well. commitments. Uh, we're updating that all the time. Um, in addition to our coaches show, we're actually going to be going to camps and doing some interviews this year, something a little bit new, interviewing some players as well. Sean's going to have a high school uh, football preview for you every Friday. So, I mean, there's just a ton of stuff during high school football season that we're going to have on the website, and we're certainly not forgetting about baseball because we're already thinking about uh, 2019 and 2020 in terms of high school baseball and teener league baseball uh, as well. It just never stops for us, and we wouldn't want it any other way. And we appreciate so much, guys, that people listening, watching the games, the players stopping by for interviews, going back to watch the games as well and listen to the games, the emails that we got. It means so much to us to be able to promote the kids, promote this league. Uh, everyone treats us so so well here, and we're, we're just blessed to be a part of it. Uh, I want to thank you guys for the great, fantastic job that you always do, and, and Roger for everything that you've done for us on and off the air. Uh, Kelly Nicely, TJ Beleg, uh, David Oliverio, who has helped us out with broadcasts, uh, Tom Bacho, Dean Watt, uh, Terry Stevenson, just everybody, and the coaches as well for for everything. And, of course, Ray LeVay. Absolutely, we, we couldn't Ray do what we do without Ray LeVay. And actually all of you out there as well, yeah. thank you for making our evening a part of your evening. Yeah, so look out for what's going on during high school football. I guess we'll take, what, a couple weeks off? A couple weeks off. Something like that? Rest our voices a little all bit right, I guess get ready to go. I guess we'll do that. 
Anything else from you guys? I think that's good. Let's put a bow on this All one. Right. Final score, the Dairy Ukes, your 2019 Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League champions. They secure a two-game sweep of the championship, winning this one 7-6 to six over the number two seed Rays. So the Ukes, your 2019 champions. For everyone that we mentioned to help make this possible, we say thank you. Once again, you've been watching the 2019 Latrobe Dairy Area Teener League championships here on the Westmoreland Sports Network. Oh, shh. I think it's still open.